There you are. I, I had a little trouble getting on. I don't know why. Sometimes I do too. Oh, we got all of our regular members and we've got one associate member. Now, so, Ray, are you, oh, are you and guess what week? time it is, folks. Ray, are you away next Tuesday? Nope. Are you here Thursday? Should I be away? Next no, Tuesday? I thought you were going away at some point here. I am. I actually, um, I'm heading to Vermont Thursday. All right. So you so, won't be at the meeting on Thursday I then? I won't be. I'll actually be in a car when that meeting. Ah. And you're July. supposed to get all that storm uh, yourself on Friday up there. It's going north up there. So you 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 saw my motive. Yes. <laughs> I'm going skiing. No. I was gonna say it's snow. <laughs> I'm I'm gonna like try and beat the storm up to Vermont. That's what. And that's I would leave cool. first thing <laughs> Friday morning then because <laughs> it's gonna be wicked up there. Yeah. Well, that's music to my ears. My my kids went up uh, last weekend and it was a bust. We got all the snow here and they got nothing up there. Yeah, so, I had somebody up in New Hampshire and they got six inches, not too much. Yeah, no, it was it was a um, coastal storm for sure. Um, you can go hey, skiing in Blue Hills. What's that, yeah. Di Diane? I said you can go skiing in Blue Hills. They got exactly. Tons of snow. Yeah. Um, we uh, certainly have a quorum. We're ready to get going. Hey, John, I just want to make sure that you're unmuted. I see you there. Oh, and I also see Stephen Welch. Great. Okay. Boy, this is great. Okay, let's get started. Um, hi, everybody. This is Ray Pohl, chairman of the Nantucket Historic District Commission. Let's first confirm that all members and people anticipated on the agenda are present and can hear me and we can hear them. So members, when I call your names, if you could respond in the affirmative. So here's the list so far, Val Oliver. I'm here. <laughs> there she is. All right, hi Val. Um, Diane Coombs. Here, here. Very good, thank you. Abby Camp. Here. Great. John McLaughlin. Okay, let's, I think John may be muted and ooh, actually. Oh, there he is. John, if you can hear me, you're, uh, you're muted, I'm pretty sure. But let's move along. So, um, Carrie Thornwell. Here. Very good, Stephen Welch. I just got a note saying he was having trouble. Stephen is. Yes. Okay, so we'll we'll count him out for the time being, and uh, we'll hope that one or the other of them comes in. Um, Jesse okay. also just texted me. He can't get on. Who? Jesse. Jesse. Yeah, you know sometimes it's tough to get on, but so let, let's continue. So staff, when I call your names, if you could also respond in the affirmative, um, Esmeralda Martinez. Present. Thank you, Holly Backus. Present. And our dear friend, Terry Norton. I'm here. Very good, thanks, Terry. Um, other speakers will be announced as the applications uh, appear. Good evening, this open meeting of the Nantucket Historic District Commission is being conducted remotely pursuant to chapter 20 of the Acts of 2021. Ensuring public access does not ensure public participation unless that participation is required by law. This meeting will not feature public comment. For this meeting, the Historic District Commission is convening by video conference via the Zoom app as posted on the town's website, identifying how the public may join. The meeting is being recorded and all attendees are participating by video conference. Therefore, please be aware that other people can see exactly what you're up to and to take care not to screen share your computer. Anything that you broadcast may be used uh, against you in a court of law. Um, meeting materials, all supporting materials that have been provided members of this body are available on the town's website. I was kidding about the court of law, but it's just very embarrassing. Um, available on the town's website unless otherwise noted, the public is encouraged to follow along using the posted agenda. 
unless the chair notes otherwise. Before we get to the first item on the agenda, we should just do a couple of ground rules for effective and clear conduct of business and to ensure accurate meeting minutes. The chair will introduce each speaker on the agenda. After they conclude their remarks, the chair will go down the line of members, inviting each by name to provide any comment, questions, or motions. Please hold until your name is called. And also, please remember to mute your phone or computer when you're not speaking. And please speak clearly so that Terry can pick up what is being said for the minutes. For any response, please wait until the chair yields the floor and state your name before speaking. If members wish to engage in a conversation with other members, please do so through the chair, taking care to identify yourself. Um, this is a publicly noticed meeting and therefore we allow public comment um, on applications. And so the way this works is after uh, the application has been presented, the chair will afford comment to those members of the public who have joined our meeting. Members of the public who wish to speak must just state their names first and be acknowledged by and speak through the chair. Finally, each vote taken at this meeting will be done via roll call. Thank you all very much. And now we're going to move to approve a rather lengthy agenda. Um, may I have a motion? I make a motion. Thank to you. Approve and that the motion agenda. is to approve today's agenda, correct, Diane? Right. All right, very good. Um, so on that motion, Val Oliver. Aye. Very good. Abby Camp. Aye. Um, John, are you there yet? Okay. Doesn't sound like it. So I'm going to go to you, Carrie. Aye. Okay. Thank you. And Diane, on your motion. Aye. Very good. And I'm in favor of motion carries. Um, so just, just one note. Um, Last Tuesday's meeting, for those of you that uh, participated in the meeting, it was you know a little depressing. I think there were a lot of contentious applications, which do tend to happen. But I think at the end of four hours of uh, HTC meeting, we reviewed a total of nine applications. <laughs> so I'm kind of hoping that for all of you listening, and I would include board members, I would include uh, uh, applicants, and I would include members of the public that are speaking. If everyone could keep their comments brief and to the point, I think it, we could cut through a lot more of this agenda than we did last Tuesday. That's my hope. Thank you. Um, so first thing we have is signs. These should be pretty straightforward. Uh, what Esmeralda, do you want to just walk us through um, sure. what we're doing with the various signs that we see um, here? Sure. Do, you, um, do you want me to go individually or well, how would you like uh, me to proceed? If we can do it, if the motion would be to hold for revisions on five applications, we can do it for five applications. If Perfect. it's like one thing on one and one on another, we kind of have to make a break for a different motion. Fair enough. So the sign council met this morning at 9 a.m. Mm -hmm. um, for application number one, 117 Orange Street. It was held for revisions. Okay. Uh, so move. Yeah. So <laughs> Diane has moved to hold that for revisions. We'll go with that. Uh, so on that motion, Val. Aye. Abby. Aye. Carrie. Aye. Diane, on your motion. Aye. I'm in favor. Motion carries. Okay, five old South Road. Uh, for number two, uh, held for revisions. So just uh, Esmeralda, looking down the list, mm -hmm. are there gonna be a lot of hold for revisions or are we gonna go uh, to some? Yeah, there is a few. I can just kind of name off the ones that are being held off for revision. Why don't we do that? Sure. Okay, yeah. Uh, so that would so it be sounds one, like five Old South Road is being held for five Old right? South Road, uh, yeah. 122 Pleasant. Okay. 117 Pleasant. Both of them? Uh, both of them, yes. Okay. Yep. And 23 South Water. Okay. So I would like somebody to make a motion that would hold five Old South Road, 122 Pleasant Street, both applications at 117 Pleasant Street and 23 South Water 
hold for revisions, okay? So moved. Thank you, Diane. Um, on Diane's motion, Val? Aye. Abby? Aye. Carrie? Aye. Diane, on your motion? Aye. And I'm in favor too. So now we have fit two at 15 Teasdale Circle. Those were approved. Okay, and how oh. about 56 Pleasant, just out of curiosity? Uh, that was approved as well. Okay, so those three applications were approving straight up. Right, that's 15 Teasdale twice yep. and 56 Pleasant Street. I make a motion to approve. Very good. That is Diane's motion. On that motion, Val? Aye. Abby? Aye. Carrie? Aye. Diane, on your motion? Aye. And I'm in favor. There we go. That was our signs. So now everybody will know uh, where to go for dinner. Um, okay, so now we have consents and it gets a little more complicated because by my reckoning, we have three people, including myself, that would need to abstain. Those people being Val, Carrie, and myself, correct? Yeah. Okay, let's see if this would work without the three of us. So Abby, can you chair this? Certainly. Actually, if we don't have John and we don't have Stephen, I think we're kind of dead in the water. Yeah, we could just pass. He went to a different computer, Mr. Uh, Chairman. He went to a different computer. He's going to try to log in again. Who did? Yeah, I'm here. Steve. Oh, Stephen's here. Yeah. Hooray. Okay, you just saved us. Okay, so Abby, what you're going to do is you're going to chair the consent and your board will be you, Diane, and Stephen. Okay, do I hear a motion? I make a motion to approve the consent. Thanks, Diane. One. Go ahead, one through 14. No, just, yeah, however many. Did we, okay. Um, uh, Stephen on the motion. Aye. Um, Aye. Val and Carrie and John on the motion. John's not with us. You only had three oh. people. Oh, okay. So it's Diane, Steve, and myself. Correct. And Diane on your motion. Aye. Aye. And I'm an aye. Very good. Thank you, Abby. Mr. Chair, Jesse is here as well. Ah, Jesse. Okay. Very good. Uh, just for the record, Jesse, you with us? Yes, I am. Just muted. There you go. Fantastic. Okay. Thanks. Um, all right. So next up is consent with conditions. Uh, nobody needs to recuse from this, but because John, I believe, is still off, we're going to need to pull in an associate member. So why don't we just pull in Jesse because he just arrived. Okay. Can I have a motion on consent with conditions? I so move. Thank you, Diane. On that motion, Val... Aye. Abby. Aye. Thank you. Jesse. Um, Aye. Abby, did I just hear you say um? Yeah, no, I was just, um, no, 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 I'm, I'm okay. I was just looking at the rooftop solar and my eye fidgeted and I thought it went down to elbow lane. So I, oh. I cleared it up. So Never you're mind. still in? Yeah. <laughs> okay, thanks. Uh, Diane, on your motion. Aye. And I'm in favor. All right, that's it. Consent with conditions is now approved. And now we're along to new business. Oh my goodness, we're just, we're, we're just cruising right now. So <laughs> I don't know about that. Linda, Linda, <laughs> dare I even ask whether we're ready to review yes. this application? We are? Yes, yes, yes. Oh, oh, oh. Somebody call 911. I think I'm having a coronary. Yeah, but don't get um, too excited because I still wow, don't have that, a that's very work. exciting news. Okay, so let's see. Me, Abby, Diane, Val, Carrie. We're all here. Let's Great. go. Let's move Finally on. Finally get this thing off the list. Yeah, but you have to get <laughs> Larry Lane off the list. I'm still waiting for between Bracken and I mean between Dan Malloy oh, well, and Jimmy. You know, but at least we get to review this 3A Beaver Street thing. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, go to the one above that. We got, um, there was some concern at um, HSAB about, and with you guys, about not having um, definite drawings. 
And we had Anton do the scan, actual scan of the structure. So we had an historic scan of the structure. Oh. And um, so that Holly has. And um, so that gives you an idea of the, the house itself. And so he then did the um, CAD drawings for the changes to the house. So they are all um, accurate this time. Okay. And so we can go to the next drawing. Here we go. The house used to have a front door. It was, a, it was just a standard three bay. It's not any wider than the three bay. And it used to have a front door, but it was taken out because one of the, mem one of the older members in the, in the family couldn't go up the stairs. I can barely get up the stairs. So they created a bedroom on the right side of the living room and took the window out, put the, the main entrance on the side and it's remained there. And we'd like to put the door back. So it's a standard three bay with a door. And um, the, obviously when we have to get it out of the ground, cause it's sitting literally in the dirt, the sills are in the dirt. Um, not even rubble underneath most of it. And uh, we want to get it out of the ground, get it out of the floodplain. And meaning that we have to turn the stairs in order to stay in the property line. And a lot of them on the, in that whole area, they're side stairs. So they're side stairs now. And on the side, obviously you can see where we've done that. The windows are staying where they are. We're adding a couple of windows. You'll see those in the next elevation. Okay. And we're adding a, a dormer to get some head height up there. It's a very short plate height. The whole house is very low ceilinged all the way up. It's mm -hmm. interesting. You want to add a dormer in the back, which is marginally, if at all, visible from whatever they call it now. It used to be Coon Street. I think it's Independent Way. Oh, yeah. You can barely see the left-hand side of the roof through the other two houses. So that was a concern before about the visibility. And we have to be obviously 18 inches off the floor. And so that's where the dormer is. It's just giving us head height for a bathroom up there. And then you can see on the left where we are keeping the windows, but adding a couple of windows so we can get some more light up there. There's not very much light anywhere in this house. It's kind of interesting. And we have reduced the size of the gable window so it's no larger than the other windows, which was a concern on both gable ends. And so now they uh, match the other size of the other windows. And the, the rear the gable end window. Yeah, up in the gable, the third floor. Yeah. So windows, at one point had been larger than the other windows. And so we well, not not in the existing condition, in what you had proposed, right? You had proposed a yes. larger window and you've reduced the size of it. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. So it's it's pretty simple here where the um, double doors are going in the rear of the house that cannot be seen from anywhere it's in the backyard and it's low enough where the only thing you see of this house is the upper left hand corner and there used to be a triple no. kitchen window. so it's pretty uh pretty simple into the backyard and obviously because we had to get it up out of the ground in order to get any room down there because of the water table we um obviously have to put a small walk down out of that thing. It can't be a grade. And so that's pretty much it. Okay. Um, it looks to me, Linda, like what you're doing is you're, you're, the whole foundation is being clad with brick, correct? Yes. And it's coming up out of the ground. Right. Well, that's obvious, but so you're going to, you're going to put a brick veneer on everything for yes. us. Okay. Um, all and right. I believe, Linda. Um, I believe the architect is online and I believe the owner is online. Polly and Frank, I believe were able to get on. They were having trouble getting on also, but they're Do up here. they want to speak? I think we'd like to hear the comments from the board right. first. Okay. I think, I mean, yeah, I think there's- They this. want to say something, they're here. I, I, okay. Yes. Um, if I may, I, want, I just wanted to go over the comments on this. Oh, project. of course. No, I, I didn't forget you. <laughs> I just wanted to see whether they wanted to speak before we got to age that problems, but we'll reserve that. Go this ahead, is, Holly. This historic renovation, um, just to give some context, is, is on a 1755 uh, Simeon Gardner house timber frame lean to. Um, and the HDC has previously uh, oh, issued a historic determination for oh, this historic. He was process. back here. Somebody, uh, Stephen, I think that mm -hmm. might be you. Yeah. Somebody needs to mute. Um, Continue. So this actual application, just to get a little bit more information, um, has gone for a, a review um, with obviously HSAB and then they've revised it. 
the uh, owners are also applying for historic tax credits, um, which you all are aware has to go to the historical commission. So at that time, I actually gave them cursory uh, comments on the proposal. I will say that I'm extremely pleased with the proposal as it's come to this, this uh, process. However, uh, HSAB and myself do have some additional comments. Okay. Um, I will notate that HSAB did not see these um, uh, plans, or, or at least the um, scans, which are awesome, that Anton has done. I would love to see this as a, um, a norm for um, houses of these, this vernacular before the commission for other projects. Uh, so HSAB took a look at these plans on January 10th. They said the raising this building at all is not appropriate for building of this age, 1755. It should remain very close to grade. There is no need to raise a building other than the owner's desire to add more bedrooms. The foundation can be repaired without, without stability, sustainably, excuse me, changing the existing relationship to the grade. A proposed site plan is needed to show the proposed stoops and window wells. I will notate that the site plan, I don't think shows it, but the floor plans do. So thank you for that. Um, is there enough room in front for the new stoop? The proposed decks and stoops need to be shown on the floor plan. They already are. Uh, Full-size double hung basement windows and grease, egress windows shall not uh, are not appropriate on the street elevation. However, there are some historic contexts that um, Linda has provided to show that in other um, properties in the old historic district and especially of uh, structures of this um, vernacular and age. Uh, they should be uh, moved to the back of the building or eliminated. The proposed front door trim needs to be scaled appropriately and detailed better. On the east and west elevation, if you wouldn't mind going to that as um, the labels are mixed up, I'm not too sure if that's been fixed on Anton's plans. Um, the west elevation erroneously labeled east, the side stairs should be straight, not turn. On the east elevation, the erroneously labeled west, B windows are too large and panes out of scale. I believe that's been revised in this Revision the attic window should not be changed to a window which is larger than the existing ones below. I believe it, it now um, reads in the same size. Mm -hmm. We prefer to see the rear French doors changed to a 12 light or better, yet to a door with a window next to it. Um, I will mention that I did pr provide comments on the door on the rear previously. Um, they were not, I want to say they, they didn't have a kick panel to it. Um, and I do believe there, there are going to possibly visible from Kuhn or I believe Independence Way on that backside. And a window survey should be provided to accurately show the size of the existing windows and which ones are being restored and changed. Um, I do believe that there's only a couple of windows that are being actually um, changed. Again, they are applying for historic tax credits and have to follow the Secretary of Interiors for um, restoration. Uh, it would be nice to see the large central chimney return in the yeah. electric meter boxed in um, and the accuracy of the dormer drawing seem questionable. I do believe that has been revised. Um, and then, um, and then HSAB respectively requests uh, any revisions back. I did want to again mention um, with the elevation of this structure being you know, slightly elevated to get out of um, flooding the, the, the structure, it meets the height regulations within Resilient Nantucket, but it, um, we also do need a little bit of information on that as far as what the BFE is. And these plans, I don't believe, reflect that. Um, one to question will, if there will be a future hardscaping plan submitted, we should see that um, on a, a separate submittal. Um, let's see. Would recommend keeping all historic windows in situ. Uh, Floor plan should indicate all decks, steps, and stoops. I believe that has been done. Thank you. Uh, do, 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 do. And then, um, again, I believe that that dormer and um, French door may be visible from that back road. Um, and then just care should be given to that location of the base, basement egress. So those are the comments. Again, they have um, been working really hard on um, addressing the preliminary comments that myself as well as HSAB has provided on this application. Those are the comments, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Okay, great. It does Can seem I like, you know, hearing that and looking at the drawings, it seems like that they have done sort of a preemptive strike in terms of remedying a lot of the things that were brought up. Yeah. So good. That's good. Um, 
Can I, Mr. Chairman, can I address one aspect of that? Uh, uh, yeah, comments. briefly, Linda, briefly, yeah. Right. The French doors, I just looked and they are not visible. The only upper left corner is visible from Coon because there's two houses right together behind it. Um, the pictures that I've shown down below, I don't know who's got control of this, but if you want to start at the top and just whap, whap down, I went up every single street over there within a couple of hundred feet and almost every single three bay, which this is, is elevated out of the ground. Uh, some have the stairs going left, some have them going right because of the, how close it is to the street, they're going left. We had originally come in with friendship stairs like that one and that did not look good on this thing. So we right. have to turn the stairs sideways because of the setbacks. And no matter what we do, because we're too close to the street. But I went and took a picture of every three bay around there and every one of them, almost every one, maybe one or two on one street are elevated out of the ground and several have uh, windows like these right around the corner from us about 50 feet away, have windows on the front elevated. Mm -hmm. So it just sort of happened down at this end of Orange Street that a, most a majority of the structures down here are elevated out of the ground. So having a three bay, which is what we are of that age group elevated out of the ground is not atypical. Uh, so I just wanted to point that out. This is actually smaller than ours. And I just wanted to point that out, which is why we felt that elevating it would be within the context of that age of a house in that particular neighborhood where for some reason they're all out of the ground. It's kind of odd. And there's three, I believe, on Beaver Street themselves that are elevated out of the ground. So it's not would be out of context for Beaver Street itself. Okay. All right. Thanks, Linda. Uh, okay, board members, and you know who you are. Who would like to speak first? I can go. Thank you, Abby. I don't know how I got the floor, but um, so how you got the floor. I uh, got to speak first. Uh, I just because uh, because you asked to. Yeah, I, I did, didn't I? So um, that's yeah. all it takes. All I got to do is just ask. I know. I, right. I, so 1755. Holy moly, that is an old building. Um, I didn't realize that. Sometimes when they get down to this area, they get kind of trashed, and I don't know why. Um, yeah. They kind of get left alone. Um, let me go uh, in order. Um, so uh, I think the dormer, uh, first of all, it has a beautiful uh, profile, this building. And I, I think the dormer does not add to it. Um, I think it's, it's, it's really a sort of a very simple, beautiful form. Um, it definitely needs the, the chimney put back. I mean, if you're gonna go for credits, historic credits, I, I would definitely, restore the chimney. I don't mind restoring, a fa I mean, um, adding a foundation in this area of, of what you've proposed. And uh, I think it's important to save this building because I mean, just the other day we saw how bad the flooding can get. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, yeah. we, we pro need that badly. Um, did I see a picture where there were shutters on this or did I imagine no, that? I think that was a precedent one. Okay. You mean a photograph? Yeah, I thought I saw. I think you were sure. looking at some of the precedents that, yeah. that okay. Linda right. had submitted. Sorry, I was just trying to give a little, you know, it would be nice to give the front of this a new, fresh formality. Right now, it, 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 oh, it's almost oversimplistic. So I would like to uh, you you know you've given it the the front door let's make that front door look like the other classic ones and the steps building up to it and and give it a a, a really nice face and and you know um cheer it up a little bit so that's what i have so far i'd like to hear what other people say great thank you Abby. i'll go i'll a quick, go uh, a quick go ahead note. diane yeah, okay oh john's uh, here yeah, John, hang on. You're not on this application, but I'm glad that you are finally here. Okay, Thanks. you know I'm here. Thank you. Yep, thank you. Okay, so Diane, do go ahead. Have, I haven't been able to see. Do we have a window schedule? Yes, it was on uh, one of the upper pages, I believe. Not that far up. Page seven. I just saw it somewhere in here. Oh, okay. there it is. As long as we have it, that will be good. I yep. think that the the dormer is too heavy for for this house. It is 
it is 1755. We have very few left of that. And whatever they're doing down the street or across the way has nothing to do with this house. This house is a particularly important house. And I think the dormer has to go. The chimney should come back. If, if we have a problem of flooding, which my house is in front of Three Beaver, uh, that I would like to see an engineer's uh, statement that it needs to be raised for flooding. And th if uh, that is not necessary, and we're not adding a basement, then we don't need to uh, talk about the windows. I would like to have another another attempt at this when we have that information. I uh, I think it should be kept as simple as possible. It is. How many does it say it's how many buildings of, of this age in this location do we have? And 1755 was sort of before the the fanciness grew. And uh I think the the windows are important where you where you're headed having them. I think that the dormer has to go. Chimney coming back. I think that's part of my notes, and uh, I'd like to see some proof that the foundation needs to be raised because of flooding. That's that's it for right now. Okay, thank you, Diane. Uh, Val. Yeah, I um, actually appreciate this application and. I don't think the dormer is egregious. It's in the rear, it's quite small. Um, we do, I think, have to expect periodically changes to buildings and this is a modest ask. Um, and I agree with Diane about wanting to see what the, what the elevation needs to be or you know, by somebody who knows more than we do. And um, that's it. Okay. <clears throat> Thanks, Val. Short and sweet. Carrie. Um, I agree about the foundation. I think having an engineer's report is a good idea. The dormer, I think, could be okay, but it's reading quite large to me. And it seems since the windows are only three over threes, they could push it further back. And just so those windows are at the bottom of the roof, mm, if that mm -hmm. doesn't make sense. Because um, raising the building, if it is raised, it looks like it's being raised three or four feet. That will bring it up to more visibility from Coon Street and all the elements that are invisible now could very well be visible then. Um, that's it. Okay, thanks, Carrie. So the few things I have on my list have already been discussed, but I'll just review them. Um, like Val, I think that the dormer is small enough that it will not really affect the profile as seen from the side. Um, it's set way in from the, from the uh, rakes that, uh, each side. So I think that's gonna really limit and downplay um, its presence. So I'm okay if it can move further back. I think that would be good because like everybody else on this board, we don't love to see a big shingled wall underneath the sill of the windows like we're seeing in the north elevation. That was item one. Item two is, is the, um, what we'd be looking for simply is a, an elevation certificate that a, a surveyor can draft up and provide. I trust that the applicant in this case has done their homework and that they haven't raised any more than would be necessary to get it to that elevation, the floodplain elevation. So we just need documentation of that. And third, um, like Abby and like HSAB, I think that the front 
the south elevation of this building could be enhanced and made somewhat more gracious by just a slightly more uh, detailed frontispiece around the new front door. And those are the only things that I would be looking for on this application. So um, what's the pleasure of the board here? Uh, to hold for more information on the engineers. Thing. That sounds good. And do we want to throw in some revisions as well? If yeah. there's anything that some, can be done, some you know. Small to the... revisions. Okay, so. Can I ask the question after we, um, I just, I want a question. I just, I'm questioning the front of the, the building. Did, I, did it really have two over twos like that close together? There wasn't a third window in it ever? No, not that I could find, put Is it that way. I've never seen a, a house with uh, like that. Yeah, I know, it's funny, it's almost a two bay. It's weird, <laughs> but uh, there's, there are actually a couple other ones in the neighborhood, but this is, it, it's odd. <laughs> mm. okay. Complexity and contradiction in Nantucket architecture. <laughs> um, so that was, just, that was just a question, right, Abby? Yes, yes, I'm okay. in favor of the motion. So, so, well, so let me just make, I'm gonna clarify the motion. So Diana's made a motion to hold from, for revisions and some further information, that further information mainly being the flood certificate that you can get from a surveyor. Just Mr. to Chair. confirm. Uh, yes. And oh. HSAB, please. I don't want to go back Di to HSAB. Diane, can, can, you, um, can you include just having it go back to HSAB for- Oh, yeah. For, they, yeah. They're, uh, they're waiting to see it. But when we call for revisions, I would like to at least have them consider the, the chimney which oh, is, yeah. oh yeah. Well, we'll I back. think a few people mentioned that. Yeah. So and I, that's I've mentioned it to her. them and we're fine with putting the chimney back up there. It just won't go all the way well, through. Well, let's that's let's stick yeah. with okay. my motion. Right. Yep. Chimney okay. spray. Um okay, so Diane has made that motion on the motion. Let's see, Abby. Yeah, and that chimney is going to affect the dormer. Yes, I'm in favor. Sorry. Thank you, Val. Hi. Very good, Carrie. Hi. Diane, on your motion? Aye. And I'm in favor. Motion carries. Thank you. So, Linda, I understand that we're still holding for Larrabee. Is that correct? Yeah, I've got to get the two people together to figure out how much is getting cut off the house. <laughs> All right, then. So you just want us to hold for what? Yeah, just hold it for further information, I guess. Uh, to Till any specific time or? No, it just keeps rolling over. Okay, so let's let's just hold this for more information, and that leads we don't have to move every single time. When the yeah. new information comes in, then it will show up on the agenda again. Okay. Yeah. Yep. All right. So let's just use the same board that we just did to take a vote on that. Can somebody move that? I oh, some will. Thank you, Diane. So the, <laughs> Diane's motion is to hold this just until we get the new information, and then it will reappear on the agenda. On that motion, Abby. Aye. Val. Aye. Carrie. Aye. Diane on your motion. Aye. And I'm in favor. Okay. Very good. That was our old business of 1221. Now we're on to new business of January 4th, 66th Easton Street, a fence. Anybody to rep on this one? I'm um, here. I'm Tony Jacobian. Oh, very good. Thank you. Um, let's see. John, you're here, right? John McLaughlin. Thank you. Okay, good. Okay, so the board on this, your name was Toby, I'm sorry. Tony, T-O-N-I, Tony, T -O -N -I. Tony, Tony, that's okay, thank um, you. Yeah, so you're gonna have the regular board, uh, that's Val Oliver, Diane Coombs, Abby Camp, John McLaughlin, and myself. Great. Okay, so let's proceed. Okay, can uh, we start at the top of, yeah, can ahead. we start at the top? Just so I give you an overview of sort of how mm -hmm. I was thinking about this. That's great. Um, so, okay, so page two, um, it's a very highly visible uh, location. Um, my fiance and I just purchased this back in November 4th. And um, it's a, a very highly trafficked area between, is the corner of Easton and South Beach. Yep. Um, there is a privet, which is the, the concern to us. Page, next page, please. This is the, the, the actual plot plan itself, thinking that, it, to, so you could sort of see what we're dealing with. The next mm -hmm. is the proposal that we'd like to uh, gain um, approval from the board. 
Um, yeah. We are, this is going to be our primary residence. Um, we are going to put very deep roots here in Nantucket. Um, we have our first grandchild coming in May and we have a little dog. So I need to fence in the area with some kind of a, a fencing. Um, if you look at the top right corner of the B South Beach and Eastern corner, there was an accident last August where there was a drunk driver that plowed right through the privet. And so there's a large hole that's been tried to be repaired, um, but you'll see it's very anemic looking, the whole sort of area, if you can see it there on the, on the photograph. Thank mm -hmm. you very much. Um, so it, there's no real way of us putting a proper fence in on, in my opinion, on the outside, which was what I was trying to avoid. Um, there are neighbors that have full fences that have solid barricade. We are not attempting to do that. My solution was be to put the fence on the inside of the privet and yeah. was inspired by the Ivy living fence over at the sister ship. And if mm -hmm. anyone has not been over there to see it, it is a beautiful, beautiful gardening slash uh, decorative um, solution for someone that wants a solid fence. It's got wire on the inside and the ivy has been grown in through it. And then it's posted with um, cedar posts. And so it sits in the ground, it's planted in the ground. And our proposal is it will be on the inside of our privet. And my future vision would be that the privet will grow better and have more protection. And uh, on the side yard, one of our neighbors has done the same thing that we're attempting to do on the side yard, which is just put in the wire with the side posts um, mm -hmm. in the area that's uh, between our, our house and the house next door to us mm -hmm. so that we have some openness between the two properties. Yeah, good. That's great. Okay, I'm very familiar with that ivy stuff and it's, it's really great. It's very it's opaque. It's a beautiful solution, I think. It's opaque and it does not take up a lot of space. That's one of the really great things about it. It's very thin. Um, so thanks for the presentation. I believe this probably went to HSAB. Is that correct, Tali? Yes, sir, it did. Okay. So HSAB took a look at this on January 10th. Just some context, this house um, has an HDC survey saying 1920 NHL data says 1940. Um, and obviously, it's probably had some additions onto it. Just to give some context. Um, this is a very prominent location. During the winter, the privet leaves will disappear and the ivy fence behind will be very visible. And this look will be unusual for this location. Recommend not approving and sticking with the traditional privet hedge. Um, and again, the contemporary appearance of a living fence was was what of was of concern of this prominent location. Understanding the intention of privacy and enclosing the yard, but adding that contemporary element was of concern. So those are their comments, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Okay, thanks. Um, okay, board members, who would like to begin? I would go. I wanted go ahead, to Diane. ask a question. On the fence that they were talking about between themselves and the neighbors, it was just a plain wire fence. Yeah, like yes. a dog. If you go fence. back one, yes. If you go back two charts to chart number four. Yeah. One more. There you go. So the green line is the, the line that delineates our house and the next door neighbor. So we could put it in, we could put the ivy in, but from an expense standpoint and just also having more air space between the two properties, I thought that it would be nicer just to put in the wire. You can't see the wire and you really can't see the, the posts, especially as they age. Well, my, my concern would be whether you could wire, plain wire fences is not something we use except no, at the farms. If you uh, go to the next chart, two, two down, that's the, so I'm sorry, the next one, number seven. So on the top of number seven, this is one of our neighbors. And this is the dog fence solution that most people have put up in our neighborhood where they put the wire into the ground. It's, it's pegged with different, uh, with, with posts along every eight or 10 feet. And that is at 12 Harbor View Drive, which is right behind our house heading towards Children's Beach. So that is one of well, our neighbor's solution. And we could put that in all around the entire perimeter, but I just don't think it's as pretty. Okay, thanks. Well, it's a question of, of who has the, the privet 
and who has the fence and how close they would be together. I would not like a freestanding wire fence. Uh, I think that's not what should be at the corner of, of Eastern and, and, and uh, North Beach Street. So that's my uh, proposal. I don't mind, I wouldn't mind a, a picket fence going down there with, I don't know whether you would put Harleys or, or the uh, privet, but not just the plain wire fence, at least as far as I'm this, concerned. This Thank would, you. The wire wait, fence wait, wait, would be between on, the sorry. two properties. Sorry. Um, let's just hear out Diane, okay? Sorry. Yeah. We'll, we'll hear out. It's sorry. okay. Um, continue, Diane. No, that's it. If the fence, like the picture she shows the 12 hour review, the fence is into the privet heads, that's one thing. If it's separate by a foot or two feet from the privet i i wouldn't go with that yeah she she's proposing just putting this on the back side her side of the privet that's already there so, yeah, so it we, would it would look like the picture at the top of the page right now yeah well i wouldn't have any problem with that it was just okay. how much distance they would have between the two right and i think the distance would be kind of zero because it would be like pushed right into the privet. Yeah, well, that's good. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Diane. Who's next? I'll go. All um, right, Abby. Thank you. I just, I just feel well. At first, highly visible corner. I mean, we're South Beach and East Easton. Um, so I would like to see the traditional privet wrap around the whole property. And, and do whatever you want in inside, like do the wire fence with the wood structures, whatever. But I think the wraparound privet is, is the way to go here. Um, so that's okay. all I have. Thank you, Abby. Uh, Val, you ready? Yeah. Um, I'm not sure how I feel about the, the ivy fence because I haven't seen it. <clears throat> but I think if but either one of them is inside the privet hedge, it's really not going to be a visual to the rest of the public. So I think I'm okay with either one. Okay. By the way, you sound terrible. I know. I feel <laughs> terrible. <laughs> it hurts just to hear you speak. <laughs> I feel like I'm getting COVID from you. Like over the, <laughs> but you, I don't, you don't have uh, COVID. You don't have COVID, right? You just have a cold. Uh, she's muted. Anyway, uh, John. Yes. John. I'm right here. All right. What do you think of this fence proposal, sir? To uh, call it a fence is uh, stretching the words, I well, think. Well, it's, yeah, you're right. It's, they're, they're it's sitting on pallets, aren't they? No. No, no. Underneath of it. Yeah, this, the stuff at the bottom, this is a, uh, it's posts with, I think, wire that essentially hold up ivy. So it's kind of a more sophisticated version of an old Nantucket fence that has the ivy that's grown all over it and you can't see the fence anymore. Um, yeah, you're, but, you're so that's what the proposal is, John. Well, uh, at this time, I say that there's a lack of visibility to itself. So what can you say? It's okay. Standard. Typical. It's just that the wire is being exposed a little bit, but they're still yeah. part of the part of the what they call a fence. A fence to me is wooden. But anyway, okay. I, I have no comment on this. All right, John. Thanks. So to be clear, um, the privet that's already there is staying, but. Uh, our applicant, unfortunately, was one of those people that got a bad batch of privet. They happen every now and again, particularly back when there was a run on privet. I've got some around my office that just refuses to grow. And so to create a, an evergreen understory behind that, behind it, not in front of it, behind it on their property, I think is fine. 
Um, in addition to the ivy fence that is now kind of new over at Sister Ship, there's also one of these ivy fences. If you go down Hussey Street, if you just turn off of center onto Hussey, past the first place, which used to be the Daria Salon, right behind that is an ivy fence that demises two different parking lots. And it looks great. It seriously looks great. And you don't see the fencing, all you see is ivy. And for, for all anyone knows, it could be like an old Nantucket fence that just got grown over with ivy. So I think that's really what we're looking here. And honestly, the picture at the top that we're looking at right now shows how sparse that privet is. And without just going in and wholesale replacing everything, I think this is actually a, a pretty good, sensitive, non-invasive solution to the problem. So I'm okay with this application. But can we clarify that that is on the inside of the privet? Oh, oh well, right. yeah, so I mean, it's yeah. it shows so on the pl plan, but um, Tony can answer that if you'd like. Yes. Yeah, I just, yeah. Absolutely. Um, I think, Chairman, you articulated our objective with what we're trying to accomplish, which is a natural approach to fencing. And so no one from the street will see the ivy, maybe. And this is this is um, this photograph was taken in no late November. So, yes, in the winter, you might see a little bit more of it, but it's an ever it, it's got lots of, it's of robust. Yeah, and so it, it will not be. It will not be. It will be in front on in the inside of the um, existing privet, which is closer to the house, so that from the house you will see the ivy. And as um, I'm intending to do is to also spend time and money repairing the privet over time and making it more and grooming it so that it will become more more healthy. Um, but it would be an immediate solution for us to have more greenery which was our attempt to be um, more historic and more provide more, more lushness to any visitors that are walking by as well as to us, putting up a fence for us. The concern I have with a, 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 a picket size is that we won't get privacy. So we'll still need to put a, a lot more money into whatever we could do to fix the privet. So well, it's a higher a fence harder, would be in It's a harder solution, you know? It's right. more visually impactful, I think. You know, if this privet were really great privet that was, you know, full all the way from the roots all the way up to the top, we probably wouldn't even be having this discussion. But because it's kind of, you know, you get this stuff every now and again, you get a pallet or, a, a, you know, a, a semi full of this kind of privet and I have some myself and I can't stand it. So, um, yeah. Well, I'll, make, I think, I'll make a motion. Okay. Go to ahead, approve. Diane. I make a motion to approve as submitted with ivy fence placed inside the existing uh, privet. Sounds good. Thanks a lot for the motion, Diane. On that motion, Val. Aye. Thank you, Val. Abby? Aye. Very good. John? Aye. Thank you. And Diane, on your motion? Aye. And I'm in favor too. All right, there you go. Thank you, board. Thanks. Thank you very much. Night, night. I'd like to it down um, to three feet high. I like that. Oh, yeah. If you really, it, well, that would it, be, yeah. To get to, to, to get the under part to go, you chop the heck out of the top part, and then, then it makes the bottom roots or the bottom right. things come out. Um, it will grow oh, back if you do that. Yeah, I agree. Okay, thank eight you New very Street. much. Do we have thank you? Um, do we have anyone here for eight New Street? I don't see anyone here, Mr. Chair. Uh, yeah, hello. Oh, oh wait. can you guys hear me? Y yes. Okay, my, my name is Elton McIntyre. I am uh, Courtney Arnott is my client. Okay. Um, early early over, she had uh she she broke her leg. So she's yes. like retained my services to help her like drive in and doing normal things and okay. pulling the, pulling the uh, permit uh, for the fence was one of those things. So okay. I, I worked alongside with Courtney and we, you know, kind of designed, okay, I can see the stuff there. Um, I know I'm not listed as an agent, but <clears throat> me and her drafted up uh, the plans. Uh, so we followed the itinerary that you guys had, the list of criteria that you needed. 
Um, there it is. So you're just, if you're looking for a length of fence on the side of the property, right? Yes. So we're looking to continue six feet uh, that, you know, runs around the house and eight, eight feet from where the curb comes to. We, we learned that it has to drop down to about, so a little backstory there while I see that photo, the, the, neighbor had, the neighbor had hired landscapers to trim that privet, but, or uh, I'm sorry, not the privet, the ivy, which they, they attempted to do a job, but all they did was destroy Courtney's side, took away the privacy, the natural look. Um, okay. I'm not, I can't remember if there was a photo of what it used to look like. So that's what we're exposed with now. It's just a bunch of the rod and picket that's underneath it. Um, prior to that, all the ivy, um, was, it, you know, it was it was looking good. There was no, you know, need to put up the fence. Um, but now, since all the ivy is kind of, you know, they destroyed it, um, probably you know unintentionally. Okay. Well, let's um, let's make sure. I want to. I personally am not completely clear on what your proposal is for, and I think the document that would tell us the most would be that site plan that had the various heights. Like, okay, so let's stay right here okay. just for a moment, folks. Continue six feet high, drops to mm -hmm. four feet high, four feet, eight feet from street. Okay, so working from the right back to the left, from the front to the back, you're saying that you want a four foot high fence from uh, essentially the front lot, the front face of the house, right? Yes. You work backwards from the front face of the house. You go eight feet back, and that length of fence would be four feet high, right? <clears throat> yes. Yes. Okay. Because there's two driveways. Well, okay. So let's, let's, let's just continue here. So after that, then it goes to six feet high. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. Yes, sir, to continue with the same height of, of the fence in the backyard. Okay, so the fence in the backyard is sort of coming along. It says six foot wooden fence. We all see that right under the received stamp. So that's already there. And then it gets up to the point where you have the gas tank and something that says 7.5 feet. And from that point forward, that's the section of fence that you are looking to create new, right? Yes, that's All right. where that's So you're going to continue the six foot fence, which by the way, I think is called a five and one, meaning five feet of board and then one foot of lattice on top. I think that's what I saw. But then yeah. after you've gotten to within eight feet of the front face of the house, then it drops down to four feet and it becomes the same type of fencing that we saw in the photographs, which is a type two picket. Is that right? Um, yes, that, uh, yeah, is, is that what is needed to make, um, make this a solution? We, the last we were, we were told... just says the whole thing. Sorry. Yeah. The whole thing. Well, you see everything. <coughs> I'm not sure I understand what that means, Val. Mr. Char, Chairman. Well, hang on, everybody. What are you saying, Val? It, it, it just is more clear when you look at this picture where the stake is. They want to go back four feet with whatever that picket they is. They want to go back the, eight feet at four feet high. Right. And then match what's in the back. That's all I meant. Which we're looking at, which is essentially a five in one fence. Right. Okay. The other thing, just as a detail, the fence that's there, it seems to be painted white. But the fence in the back that's existing is natural. What are you proposing? Natural to weather. The whole thing? Yeah. Okay. That's, and also on the other side of the house where they're putting in the long thing, that should drop back for the same length of same length as the as the fencing on the other side. Because we don't very often have the five and one go down right to the street. Is that right, an existing right. condition? I can't see that. All right. Well, one other thing that we need to take care of here, 
before we get too engrossed into the details of this is HSAB comment. Yes, sir. So HSAB did take a look at this. They had a quite a, a few concerns or comments as, as you all. Um, on January 10th, they said, it, one, want to know if this was a like kind repair. I think having that history um, is very important. I believe you all approved as a, uh, as a sidebar here, you all approved a new driveway on the adjacent parcel. Um, so maybe that's why this fence was uh, erroneously removed. Um, and that they did mention that it should be natural to weather um, instead of painted white as okay. it looks like it was. So those are the comments. And just for context, this is a circa 1835 house that it's associated with within the okay. old historic district. Thank, thank you, Holly. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, hang on just one second, John. Sure. Elton, was that your name, Elton? Yes, sir. Yeah. Um, do you have anything else you want to say before I put it to the board? I, I think it's pretty clear right now. So maybe my advice to you is let's just hear what everyone has to say, and then I'll give you a chance to respond, okay? Okay. All right. Um, okay, who would like to begin on this? I'll do it. Uh, go ahead, John. Yep. Thank you. Um, according to what I've seen yep. and according to what I see existing, yep. that two, two different heights of fences, but they're the same type. I think they're approvable for this area. It's uh, It fits right in. You already got enough of it there on both neighbors. Yeah, I, I don't find anything wrong with it. I'm making both okay. of it as submitted. Okay. Um, terrific. Thank you. Anybody else? Val? It is. My only question would be, is the picket fence now four feet? If it, if it is, that's fine. Uh, that's kind of high for a picket, but mm. <clears throat> that would be it. Elton, can you answer that question? Are you able? Yeah, I believe it was like, uh, like uh, three and a half feet, so exactly four feet. I, I know indeed it does say like four feet, um, but if I, I'm sorry I don't have um, the paperwork in front of me, my copy, but I don't think it's exactly four feet, it's shy. Do you like think it's three and a half feet? feet? Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. So Val, your only concern is that it matched the height in the front? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Diane? My only thought is if we can make that three and a half feet a new typical fence, that would be good. But I'd like to see it if it is not going down to the street now at a five and one or a six foot, I'd like to see it drop back the same size, same amount of distance as it is on the other side of the house because they both face out on New Street. Okay. Mm. Um, I haven't yet seen a picture of the five and one on the other side of the house. No, I haven't either. Oh, but do you know that it's there? No, I don't know. That's why I said I don't oh. know if it's there. What's that, you, on the, what's that uh, on the what's that on the what's that photograph? Is that a five and that, one? Well, that's yeah, that is, but that's the back of the house, not the front. Yeah, that, yeah, that that's the back. That's not the side. That's kind of conjoining those two properties. Yeah, you can see it right there in that photo. Yeah, this is all taking place in the back. Is, is there? Yeah, so that, that means... Hey. What we have Sorry, before yeah. us is the length of fence over there by the driveway, which I think we all understand. Um, so, Diane, have you finished? Yeah, that's that's all. Otherwise, okay. So you, you'd one, rather uh, see it come down to the three and a half feet rather than four. Right. That, I think that would be good on both sides of the house as it goes. Well, but into see, this is property. what I don't understand. Like. I, I, there's not an application for fence on the other side of the house. So that's why I'm oh. confused about your Oh, comment. well, I, I, we keep going by. I don't catch that. I thought fencing was what we were concerned with. I Here. didn't know it was just Here. on Here. one side. Let's just house. tie a bow around this just for a second, just, just so that we're all clear. Whoever's uh, guiding the, the uh, visual, go to the, that's right. Okay, so... That blue line is the one length of fence that we are reviewing and approving, and that's two heights. One is four, which seems like it's gonna be going to three and a half feet for the first eight feet. And then after eight feet back, it's going back up to the five and one to match the fence that's already there. That's the proposal. Right. 
Okay. Mr. Yep. Chair, it's fine. I, I said that to begin with. I just said I okay. thought on the other side, but but we're not looking at that, so never mind it. Yeah, I don't think so. The, on the other side, the two houses are very, very close to each other. Hey, um, thank you. Holly, did you have something that you wanted to say? Yes, Esmeralda is bringing up the street view. If you see the picket is on the other side. Oh, oh yeah. This, oh, this actually so, shows really well of the existing condition that got room. Oh, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then the existing okay. fence. So I guess it would be important if you all are going to approve the picket to match that the front is still white to match this side and then the five and one to be natural to weather. Uh, I, I would, I personally would totally agree with that. Yeah. Yeah. Me okay. too. Okay. Um, thanks, Diane. Let's see. Abby, to you. Yeah, I, I would go with the white picket fence on New Street going back to the wherever they want to start, yeah. wherever their eight, garden is. Eight feet is. back from the front of the house. Right. And mm -hmm. and so it, so it would be a, a type two pick, uh, picket, um, you know, our old traditional fencing. Just like white. you see in the picture. And that would be three and a half feet high rather than four. Mm hmm and right. it would be painted rather than natural. Yeah, three and a okay. half. I mean, that's already six inches over typical, isn't it? Aren't they usually 36 inches high? Yeah. Right. I don't really know if they even need, like, what is that, 40 inches? Uh, no, I think three we, and a half we, feet is 42 inches. 42. So isn't the type two picket usually three, just three feet? Uh, I mean, they don't need any privacy because they're they're looking at each other's driveway. So, yeah, I'm sorry. Can I chime in? We're not looking for privacy here. We just right. want to make sure if if they decided to continue to use, um, you know, the driveway that as they're backing out, they're able to look over their shoulder. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll I'll make a motion to uh, um, approve it with the type two picket on New Street going back eight feet to right. where it changes to a, is it a five and one? Five and one, yeah. Five and one natural yeah. to weather. Right, and and I, you didn't say this, but you implied that the front run is painted white. Yes, I, I, did, I did, I said painted. Oh, you did white. mention that, okay. So that is Abby's motion. On Abby's motion, uh, Val. Aye. Thank you, Diane. Aye. Thank you, John. Aye. Very good. Abby, on your motion. Aye. And I'm in favor, too. So the motion carries. Thank you, Elton. Uh, you're welcome. Thank you, members of the board. Right. Good right. meeting. Okay, thanks. Um, all right, old business of January 11th. And Abby has, has the distinct pleasure of chairing the first application to be heard on this old business which is at 19 Broadway. Let's see, Abby, Diane, Val, Carrie. So you got everybody there. I'm going to mute, I guess. You, you, you got me covered, Abby? Yes, sir. Thank you. On Broadway. Um, do we have a representative or are we gonna? Hi, yes. Good oh, morning, hi. How are you? Well, good and yourself? Good, good. Oh, this is exciting. This was fun. Pick and choose. Um, did you want, so you, you, the, you, you made it quite clear. Should we just go to the board and see what they think? Or did you want to say something before we do that? Um, no, I'm fine. Uh, I would like to hear what the board has to say. Thank you for doing that. That's um, that's a lot of work. Um, so we got we got Abby, Diane, Carrie, Val. Who anybody want to go first? Who made a choice? What are the choices? See them up there. Yeah, but well, one was what <laughs> one was two are architectural shingles or three, and then on the right. I don't know, maybe Stephen, you should tell us which are which. I, I mm. made it, I went out there and made my choice, but. Um, yes, so the four architectural colors that are on the roof at the present moment are actually the 
only architectural colors that are approvable in the historic district of Sconset. Um, and then on the far right is just the, it's a more black three tab, which are placed next to each other. So on the right hand side, you have a three tab and the architectural in the same color. And then if you go to the three on the, on the left, you have your weather wood, which is on the bottom. You have a charcoal black, which is above it. And then on the left, sorry, uh, you have a pewter wood, which is above it. And then on the left, you have a charcoal black. Yeah. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. Anybody yeah. feel I think the one all the way to the right is the best match. <clears throat> uh, uh, the, uh, to the right of the chimney. Uh, in the... Yeah, which is the three tab. Okay. <clears throat> yeah. Okay, and that is that the more Yes, ma'am, that is more black. That, that far right, and then the one in from that, is that, what's that? It's, it's the same color, it's just the architectural shingle, uh, which the client would prefer to install just because it has a higher wind rating. Um, right. It's a more sturdier shingle, it seals a lot better. It's just what most of the roofers on island are going to at the present moment. Right. Um, well, um, could I just stop and see if there's a, uh, the Sconset Advisory Board, did they weigh in on this? Madam Chair, they did not look, um, they did, this wasn't put on their agenda for them to review. Basically, at the end of the day, their original comments were that architectural shingles are not typically approvable within the old historic district, or at least Sconset, and that they prefer either three tab or wood. Um, I think Stephen provided you all with photographs of some historic structures within Sconset's old historic district that are architectural um, from you know, whatever approval process that was at that particular time. Um, I just wanted to mention again, for the record, that this is a significantly historic uh, resource within the old historic district of Sconset um, and uh, dated back from 1750 as one of the early whaling houses. And of course, we wouldn't have uh, asphalt at that particular time. It would have been a cedar roof or a shake roof. Um, but then again, um, understanding the, the need and want to go to um, an architectural uh, roof versus uh, the three tab. So it's just a little bit of context for you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Holly. So, um, so Diane, I'll we can go. change our minds. I'll. Okay, go. Is that Carrie or Diane? It's me, Diane. Just... Okay, go ahead, Diane. I like the, the one on the right, the three tab, Maury Black. The far right, not the architectural. Yep. And and, and Val, you are for that one too, right? Val? Yes, I like do. Yeah. Because the roof is, there's so many roof lines and so many bumps. And I think it's just going to be overwhelming to the house. Mm, right. <clears throat> right. Uh, yeah, that's part of the house on the uh, behind it too. Yes. Holy smoke. Okay, and um, Carrie, um, I agree that it should be three tab. I was just sort of hoping it could be a little lighter than the Mari Black, but if Mari Black is our choice, I think I'm okay with that. Um, Stephen, uh, on the to the left of the chimney on this on this picture, there are three uh, samples. And one of them is lighter. What what is that? Is that architectural? Uh, that, that is architectural, yes, ma'am. Um, that is weatherwood. Weatherwood, okay. Yeah. Um, I don't like weatherwood. Okay, okay. Um, I was thinking I like those two, but um, all right. So sounds like it was is uh, anybody else on this? Did I miss somebody? can't remember it was it was myself diane carrie val Is john it. on this no no all right i'm sure he's no, not this is old business all right so i'll make a motion i'll okay, make a motion to approve three tab Mari black okay on diane's motion um val i uh, Carrie. Aye. Okay. And 
Joanne, and I wanted to go for a lighter one. So I'm a nay, but that passes. So we got it. Thank you, Stephen, for doing Thanks, all that sir. work. You're welcome. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Abby. Thank you. That was quick and trouble free. Um, okay, next up is 17 Broadway. Ray? Yes, John. Uh, nobody asked me for my opinion. You weren't on it, John. I'm not on it. No. I, I thought I said I was. It No, no, you weren't on that one. Hey, okay. so John? John? Yeah, you know, on this. What's your opinion of not being on it? Yeah. <laughs> okay. okay, but John, you're on this one. Uh, you are on this one, John. You are on the next one, this 17 Broadway. But now, uh, so I've heard that Val Oliver is sick, so we might need to hold this one over. Let's just see. <laughs> uh, well, there she is. Okay, so myself, Abby, John, Diane, Carrie, everybody's there. Val, what do you have to say? Well, <clears throat> excuse me. Oh, this was right, a, right, right, right. This was held yeah. Um, yeah. for information on the way. Yeah. And um, oh. I'm showing you the, um, well, first let me say, um, all the units are inside the property line Correct. Um, as were the original storage unit, those two bins, two or three, um, that were permitted by HDC and the building department, actually, can you believe it, 30 years ago in 1992, and I included those approvals in this packet. Um, now that was for the, I believe there were two, right? And now there's four? Yeah, and a shower. Okay. The carpenter got carried away and yes. um, here we are. So those were the original <clears throat> permitted, even by the building department. I couldn't believe oh, it. Okay. So the blue <clears throat> things that we're looking at are legit. Yeah. Okay. So uh, I think one of the biggest concerns was about well, aside from them being there, was about the way and yeah. how it impacted the way. But they're still all inside the property line as were the original bin. So that is not a concern. Mm -hmm. um, the carpenter thought that the additional units he was adding are consistent in size and location on the house <clears throat> with the exception of the shower. And keep going, if you would, scrolling down through this. Um, I wanted to show you that it was always shown on the uh, plans when we were proposing the alterations to the building, not the new builds, but that those bins were there. <clears throat> the owner, um, keep going, next one. Those are, those are the units that were added and then keep going. Sorry, I have to keep the saying that. The two with the blue arrows are the added ones. Yeah, so yeah. the owner had these images photoshopped to show a variety of um, choices perhaps for keeping some of them. <clears throat> And he weathered them in, had them weathered in. So he wanted to just show a couple of arrangements, <clears throat> taking away, one was taking away the shower, the other was taking away, I think, um, there's two pages of these. So go hey, one more. Um, <clears throat> yeah. I'm a little bit, oh, oh, so these aren't like arborvitae growing out of the top of the containers. They're like hanging ferns or something. Yeah, they're, they're hanging he's just over. showing <clears throat> if he added vegetation in between and took some of the units out, okay. you may feel differently about it. So <clears throat> it was just as a, a tool to help visualize. Yeah. This is interesting too, because you know, the, the photographs on the top, yeah. which were taken right after 
the horrible act was committed, you know, shows all this like raw pressure treated wood. And then the ones below clearly have aged a number of months or whatever, and they're started to gray out, which is good, but, um, Oh. So what we're asking for is um, definitely the replacement of the existing, uh -huh. please. But also, would you consider any of the additional minus the shower? So is the shower simply being taken off the table? Yes. Period, end of story. Yeah. All right. So then what we're really, <laughs> what is under discussion right now, please correct me if I'm wrong, uh, are the one that's underneath of the double wind, the large double window, the really low one. Yeah. And then the piece between that and the shower, which is going away, that's slightly taller. Right, which go to the previous, please. It shows that. This oh, view doesn't. Elevation. Yeah, the, the last slide. Right. The last slide. <laughs> <laughs> whoever's doing it uh, <laughs> so yeah, there okay, that's it yeah. the angled view without the shower is what we'd really most like to keep <laughs> okay val i think we got it thank okay. you um okay so uh obviously we want to hear from sconce advisory yes mr chair uh thank you um just for context this is a um Historic resource within Sconset's historic district, Nonantum, circa 1791. Um, Sconset took a look at this on the 18th. Um, they did have public comments um, in attendance as well. Um, they said that th this is some comments that um, the uh, advisory board had mentioned that these storage containers and shower were constructed without prior approval. Removal was suggested at a prior HTC hearing in December. The public um, mem uh, property owners from 21 Front Street, the as-built containers are not in insignificant. Uh, 15 Broadway, uh, as being in the court's old historic district of Sconset, uh, are ways considered historic as well. People are encroaching on ways all over Sconset. And a comment from uh, a Front Street neighbor, outdoor shower is right on Broadway. Sconset Advisory's concerns were on the scale of the storage um, units um, alongside of the way is unprecedented and in a rambling free for all. Um, I would um, just you know comment, thank you Val for doing their research and, and finding out those previous approvals from 92. Very, very appreciative. Obviously, I think the commission would it also appreciates that goes back to what you always say is uh you know do research and photos 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 um but i would recommend if the commission is so inclined to um whether you're wanting to keep the original that were done in, in 92 or also um allow the additional ones that they, they stay natural to weather and not be painted blue so those are the comments mr chair thank you oh yeah i forgot about that that's a little perk here which is that the existing ones were horrible royal blue, and at least these are natural to weather. Okay, thanks, Holly. Um, okay, board members, who wants to start on this one? I will. Thank you, John. Yes, sir. Judging from what I see here, Mr. Chairman, part of this does not have a permit, okay? That's correct. Now, Some of it does not shower. have a permit. Yes, John. Doesn't have a permit, okay. The other right. thing what I'm, what I'm looking at, I think, is uh, undefensible that, 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 that uh, I'm sorry, that what I would recommend on this is that this, this yellow of the wood plane calls your attention right to it, all right? And I think they should take and paint that whole, that whole yellow section, paint it white to match the house, on the, which is painted white. And that, that clears up a lot of things that people are complaining about this. And it, it hey, John. Be, it doesn't have a permit. Thank you. John. Uh, what are we going to do about it? Hey, John, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to point something out to you. So it's interesting. The photographs on the top of the page, the yellow ones, they were taken right after this happened. So the wood was new. It was right out of the lumberyard. 
And if you look at the same photographs on the bottom, they have weathered out, so they're more gray. So it, they're not yellow it's been, it's, anymore. Just want to tell you that. Anyway, thank you, John. Who's next? No, paint it white or gray. Look All right. Yellow. Okay. Um, I'll go. Thank you, Diane. Yep. I would go back to the what was granted in 1992 but they are to weather naturally, to, to natural weather. They're not to be stained or anything else. And I think that um, I think the ones under the double windows, I think in the old one, which we don't have up now, it, it fit under the double window. It was that size. And what did, uh, Val, what, what did they use the taller one for? The one on the end is a shower. Okay, but no, I meant the one that's on the right-hand picture. There, there's the rubbish things, and then there's a, there's a taller one. I wondered what that was for. Are you Between talking about the one next to the shower that matches the one on the other side of the window? The one on the other side of the window. What, what did they I use? I don't know that? what's stored in there, but. <laughs> um. Hello, hello. Um, this is Helen Strong and I'm across the street at 18 Broadway. And we look at this, you know, occasionally. And we- To we answer heard, the question, it's, it's, it's for umbrellas. It's for umbrellas, the tall one. Oh. I, I really, they can put their umbrellas somewhere <laughs> else. I could do it if that was cut down and not put up between the two sets of windows and it was left to uh, natural to weather. Um, and maybe when we saw what it looked like, consider that very low one that went under the windows. But the two tall ones, I find hard to to accept, okay? Yeah. Well, the tall one that's wait, wait. closest. Hang to, on. Okay, is the original. On. Just yeah. hang on, because I'm realizing something. <clears throat> what I should have done before I open this up to the board is, I are there neighbors that want to speak on this application? Yes. Okay. Can, yes. Well, you've obviously unmuted, so can uh, uh, you can speak. Just give your name for the record and your, your address, and then you can speak on the application, okay? 18 Broadway, uh, right yeah. across the street at a yep. slight angle, Carter Strong. Okay, thanks. And, and, and to use a few, uh, 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 first of all, uh, I, I, I find it, uh, I'm a little bit skeptical to think uh, that the, uh, to think, that the builder did this without the consent or awareness of the owner stretches one's imagination enormously. Um, it, it was just, uh, as our neighbor who will speak for himself, Peter Crow said uh, that, that, that this effort here was egregious, uh, if not brazen. And I had on several occasions sitting in our front porch, heard the owners conversing prior to any official uh, opposition. I heard them scheming for lack of a better word uh, as to uh, anticipating dealing with the HDC on this matter and what they could give up and not give up. Well, okay, so that's kind of ad hominem. Gossip, you know, no, no uh, uh, if it's accurate, it's neither of those two. What I'd like to hear is what your concerns on the application are as opposed to discussions you well, well, uh, uh, my biggest, uh, I'll, I'll be frank. Okay. My biggest concern was of course the shower, uh, having a shower almost on Broadway. In fact, this summer we saw towels strewn over the top of the shower sitting on our yeah. front porch. But, I but think that, we would all agree with you on that, but Val uh, has- As I has said, been, that's gone. Yeah, that's uh, going away, right. Uh, uh, but okay. The, uh, that, that was my main objection too. Peter Crow at 16 Broadway across the street. Okay. 
Okay. It seemed inappropriate to have a private shower in a public way. <laughs> and I think the owners who are wonderful people, we're very happy to welcome them to the neighborhood, uh, have recognized that that's not appropriate. And so they, they've taken this off the table. It's a good start. Yeah. Okay, anything else from the neighbors before I go back to the board? And I, I apologize that I didn't do this in advance of hearing the board members. Pour some of that in. Hang on, Diane, one sec. Sorry. Uh, Janet Ballou, I'm not a, not contiguous, but I'm over on Front Street. Okay. Um, the questions that were raised a couple of weeks ago were about right of way. The question mm -hmm. I'm raising now is the going forward of building out every inch of your property line um, and how that's going to affect his, this historic district, the feeling in, mm -hmm. in Wisconsin. Yeah. That's it. Well, well said. Um, you know, I think none of us is particularly in love with this railroad uh, train of, of uh, buildings. So uh, we're here to see what what sort of compromises need to be made to make this approvable. But thank you I, for your comments. I, yeah. um, sorry. <clears throat> yeah. I am also very aware that this is going to become a precedent. What is done here at 17 Broadway is going to become a precedent for that area in Scotset. Okay. So uh, very careful and mindful consideration is um, requested. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Let's see. Um, in terms of the board, we heard from John. Oh, speaking of what John had to say, Val, the images on the bottom, which I'm thinking the wood is, is, has weathered. Is that true or was the wood photoshopped as well as the addition of the vegetation? The wood was as well. The wood was, so it's still that color. I don't know, I haven't been out there. Oh. <laughs> hey, hey, any of the neighbors, can any of the neighbors uh, that have been out there or have been out there really recently to talk about the color of the wood? Because it will weather out to that right. sort of color. I think that was what he was trying to show. Yeah. Well, yeah, he 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 did a great job of photoshopping because it had me fooled. I mean, the vegetation, no, but the 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 weathering. Yes. Anyway, um, I think that. Everybody is going to prefer, I'm not going to say everybody, but I think most people would prefer all of this stuff to be natural to weather rather than the blue that was there before. So John has spoken, right. Diane. Hey, am, I, am I on this? Uh, I would. Abby, you are on this. Yes. Okay. So. But, but, but gonna... Abby, Abby, one sec. Just, what? All of the, Diane was speaking and I'm not sure that she's finished. I think I, I think she's finished, but I want to make sure. So Diane. No, I, no. Oh, okay. I Go ahead. Yep. The, those, the Scots people, you know, started to talk and I didn't want to push it. Mm. I, looking at it now again and again, while they were talking, I'd look, I, if they want to have, to me, if they want to have the bin under the three windows, the rest of it, no. It, but whatever is left, I would like to see uh, natural weather. I don't think this is the place to put stuff for umbrellas. Keep the umbrellas in the closet in the front hall, like everybody else. This, this makes it a whole other building. It's not, it's not sponsored by any means. And as a speaker from Wisconsin said, we, we passed this and we'll be doing it all the time. The regular trash bin and nothing else. That's my opinion. Thank you. 
Okay, thank you very the, much. The yeah. second one from the trash bin was already permitted, so I'd at least. Yeah, yeah no, I, I'm gonna. I, I will get to that. <laughs> Mr. Chair. Uh, yes. If you'll allow me, I'm going to share a, a photo I just received of what it looks like right now to give oh, you all. A well, it's kind of halfway there. I mean, it's yeah. certainly not yellow wood anymore, but what, what it's going to turn into is if, if you all look to the other side of the way, you see that lattice, it's, it's going to be that color. Just like the lattice next to the covered uh, meter box, that's all going to go to that same darker color because that's the way red cedar goes out here, fortunately for us. Okay, thank you, Holly. Let's see. Um, okay. Oh, Abby, yeah, you were going to go, so it's your turn. And yeah. sorry, by the by the way, that lattice on appended to the south side of Willow Harp, that is that's new. In other words. This is what you, this is exactly what I was trying to say, that everybody wants to make it pretty according to how they see pretty. But in the meantime, these, well, spaces, these right of ways are getting now, okay. compromised. It's Sorry. entirely possible. And I, I'm hearing from board members, not necessarily the public and not necessarily what's happening next door. I understand your point, but it's entirely possible. You can see that there are um, HVAC units behind that lattice. So this board may actually have approved that. I don't know, but you know, I mean, it's entirely possible that we required that lattice to go there for them to have those AC units. This is something that we've, we're in the practice of doing now when you're retrofitting AC. So, but to keep this relatively on point, if I can, let's go to Abby Camp. Okay, Abby Camp. Um, Abby I Camp. I appreciate the guy who said, um, I think his name was Crow or something, that, he, that putting a, a shower in a public way was, um, I just, I just thought that was so funny. I mean, it says it all. Um, yeah, we have to be careful. It's on these little cross over, you know, areas. I mean, um, and I would just go back to the original um, storage boxes or trash bins that were approved uh, by the board and, and everything else go. So, um, I'm going to take the conservative route here. Okay. Sounds Natural weather, hopefully. Uh, yes. Thank you, Abby. Carrie. Um, I agree. I think it should just be the original, what was there, but just leave them as built. So the left piece, the tall piece in the middle, and get rid of all the three end pieces. Okay. Thanks, Carrie. So this is sounding a little bit like a mandate, Val. Uh, just, uh, I'm the odd person out and I was going to say as a quid pro quo to getting rid of the awful Royal blue, I was going to allow the little, the lowest of the, the box cars to stay so that you would have a total of the two that were existing and then the next one in line. But I think I'm in the minority on that one. So can we make a motion on this one? I'll make, I'll make a motion to approve natural to whether the original items that were there. And no, the two, and none other. Two, and nothing else. Right. And was, was that costing of the electricity meter, was that approved? Or is that part of the new stuff? Val? You. Don't I mean? I think they just covered new. it to make it look better. Yeah. To hide the pipes. <clears throat> it's a bit. I, I don't know. They seem to like to construct very heavy things. I know <laughs> that John Lawrence, who had a um a house on Shell Street, had something had some air conditioning that we asked him to protect or hide and he hid it 
with some uh, cross ones like the one across the street and just up to it. This looks like a, another building. I would not, if that's part of our thing, I would not include that either. I would make it simpler and, and fitting in better. I'd rather have the trellis than that grandfather's clock. That's good. <laughs> I have an opinion. A very poetic way of describing that. Okay, so Diane, I believe you were making a motion, right? <coughs> yes, I would make a motion to approve the original uh, approval back to the to the two and the one tall one in uh, natural to weather, and that's all. Okay. There's the motion, folks, and I'm gonna I'm gonna uh, go through the board on this on Diane's motion. Carrie, aye. John, no. no. Oh, okay. John, I'm not. John, they're only approving the two that were already approved that years ago. I haven't given my opinion yet. I want to give but it. No, you did give your opinion, friend. You did give his opinion. Oh, okay. All right. Well, okay. John wanted these things to be painted. I don't think that anybody else is in favor of painting them, John. So, so you can vote against the motion. Yeah. I'll All right. My, I'll give my opinion. You do what you want. You're the chairman. I uh, think well, we should take. Well, you no, you're perfectly within your rights to to not vote in favor of of the motion for sure. Okay. So John, you're you're a no. Let's see. So uh, Abby. Yeah, uh, yes. Okay, and Diane on your motion. Uh, aye. Okay, and I'm going to abstain from this one. Uh, and and the reason I'm abstaining is just because I don't find boxing in. What, what what's called a grandfather clock. I'm looking at that photograph that does show all that mechanics of the meter. And I think that's fine what they did. I don't love the rest of it. In fact, I really dislike the rest of it, but um, I'm just going to abstain. So- uh, That wasn't part of the motion. <laughs> no, oh, it oh, wasn't, wasn't part of the motion. It no. was not. So no, we're leaving that not. as is. I, I thought it was part of the motion. Yes, yeah, so did no, I. No, it was, it was a snide remark to make. Oh, oh okay. Okay. So snide I remark should not, be not made in the middle of making a motion. It messes me up. <laughs> okay. That Well, I'm glad that we got clarity on that. So then I suppose I will be in favor of the motion. So the motion does carry four in favor, uh, one opposed. There it is. Val, sorry about that. Um, Okay, next up, oh, look who it is, the Botticelli and Pole crew. Um, is Lisa there? Yep. <laughs> All right. Yep. Uh, um, Abby, it looks like you're chairing these two, and I'm going to mute. Yep. Thank you. Bye. Hi, everybody. Hi, Lisa. Hi, how you doing? Good, how are you? I'm okay, thank you. Good. Um, so this is for the one on the boulevard. And the last time I was there, um, the comments were to revise the front door, which we went to a four light, um, remove the shutters, which we did, and to also drop the, which is encircled right below the words, eliminate shutters, we dropped that roof line. If you look at the original, it was much closer to the ridge. Yeah, exactly. Um, and, and then on the next side, we got rid of the gable and we put in the shed dormer, which was another comment. And I think those were the significant changes. I mean, you see the gable um, on the next page, you'll see the um, gable where we lowered the roof pitch on that one gable to bring the roof height down. I see that. Um, are those all the elevations you have? That, those are all the elevations. I love the chimneys. Those are fun. Um, does anybody feel inspired to comment? I think it looks great. 
Carrie, good. Uh, I think it looks. Yes. Diane? I think it looks great. Also, the only thing I could possibly complain about are the mold windows on whatever you know, elevation what that is. <laughs> but they're not my favorite things, as you know. But I think the building is great. I love the chimneys. I think the roof walk is well placed. So I have no problem with it. Oh, very good. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Val. I'm okay with it. <coughs> <laughs> we got to get you some, some NyQuil in a bag. Rubitussin or something. Um, Carrie, you went, but Diane went, John. John's not on it, Abby. Uh, I don't. Oh, hold on a second. No, he's not. It's just Camp Coombs, Oliver Thornwell, according to the agenda. Okay, all the ladies. Um, yes. So could I just the site plan for a second? I just wanted to see how large. Wow. Is that a five? Is that more than a five foot setback? What is that? Uh, so that's a good ten. question. I would say that's about looks well, more it's than 20. It looks like 10 because it's half yeah. of parcel D, which is 20. Yeah. Okay. All right. And that, and that, and the next door one is sort of, yeah, it's a little humongous, but I, I think you did a good job. And so, um, what do we want to do with this? Make a proof as submitted. Very good. Diane, on your motion. Uh, Aye. Okay, Val, Val Aye. and Diane and Carrie. Aye. And I am an I. So an I for an I. Tooth for a tooth. <laughs> Thank you. Good job. Where's Mr. Chair? Well, the next one is uh, uh, also one of ours. So I think you are chairing it, okay. Abby. 32, yeah, 32 Halbert Avenue. Is you, Abby? Yes. You're cheering this. Madam Chairman. All righty. Let's see what you did. So um, we did quite a few things. Um, the, the first thing is we actually made the front door face halberd, which before we didn't have. Um, so we created a four light front, front door and side lights for the house. We reduced the glazing dramatically. We also, I think one of the more significant changes is changed the glazing type, which I think just made the house feel much simpler going to the two over twos. We lowered the gambrels on either side of the main mass so that there was more of a feeling of a main mass, um, which I believe is something that Carrie suggested. We also uh, disconnected the decks. Um, you can see in the, it's hard to see, I know, cause it's small, but the deck used to be continuous across that entire um, north elevation previously. So now it actually is broken into two separate decks, one sort of in the middle and then a smaller one cut into the roof to the right. Um, we removed um, uh, some length out of the overall building. And um, I think those were the, I think the primary issues were that with the house were uh, the one, the facing the road, um, and I think the other ones just kind of follow suit. We did lower. Oh, we did lower the roof one. I'm sorry if you go back. I'm sorry, Esmeralda. Um, on the left side of the house, that roof line came down um, noticeably to the main ridge. If you if you compare the two drawings. So we were trying to make the main ridge make have more prominence, lower the subordinate masses, reduce the glazing, and simplify the glazing by uh, changing the window type. And to and we took some length out of it. Okay, um, Josh, I thought Stephen was on this. No, I'm sure. actually, yeah. John oh. is on it. John, okay, John, John's on it. Okay, yes, Madam Chair. Very good. I do have HSAB comments for your consideration as could well. You, could you give those, Holly? 
Absolutely. So uh, HSAB took a look at the revisions on January 18th. And they said this house is still too close to both Holbert and Willard streets. Almost all of the other houses in the neighborhood are further back. The ones that are on are this close have front porches and one story roof lines that mitigate the closeness to the street. This house has a 30 foot tall gable 14 feet from the property line. Unless the gable is lowered or changed to a one story element, the house should move further back. It is also considerably wider than most houses on that side of Colbert Ave. It is nearly a lot line to lot line and presents too broad a face to the street. It can be reduced in length. The combination of height, 32 feet, uh, five inches, width and proximity to street make this feel too imposing. Moving the building out of the elevation nine flood zone could allow the height to drop a couple of feet. It would also put it a more comfortable distance from Holbert Ave. The original six over six windows are more, more suited for this neighborhood. The second floor double French doors facing Holbert have too much contiguous glass and should change to a single door with windows. The second floor deck off the great room overwhelms the roof and should be reduced in width and depth. Uh, shifting south projecting wing to the east side way from Willard Street would reduce the amount of building on that corner. And the front uh, door facing Holbert is a, a, is a, excuse me, a typical front door and the side lights are unusual, is not a typical front door, excuse me. I can't read this evening, my apologies. Uh, the chimney um, existing the shed dormer, exiting the shed dormer is awkward and inappropriate. And HSAB does respectfully request any revisions back I did want to notate that the Gambrel, I think I mentioned this at the last meeting, that it is a nice and appropriate style for, for this location of uh, Brant Point, Holbert Avenue. And I also wanted to remind that this um, new infill on Brant Point should also uh, comply with Resilient Nantucket Chapter 11 for new construction. Yes, those are the comments, Madam Chair. Thank you. Thank you, Holly, for those. Uh, let's see, uh, let's hear from John on this first. I'll go. Yeah, uh, I asked you to go, John. Would you comment, please? I'm sorry, can I go? Yes, please. Thank you. Could you go up three notches, please? I can't, I can't read it. Now, they, I was told last year, last week, that we'll try how to, that everybody can read it, okay? Could I have the north elevation, please? You're looking at it, Sonny. Okay, that's a, that's a, not the elevation, that's the front. All right, they're going to make it the front door. But the thing is, you got, you got more glass than you do wood right in the middle. So the thing to do is revise the door. I, I ask that on a lot of houses because the door is the most impressive part of a structure. And the rest of it, I, 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 I say, uh, I'm going to not make too many comments on it. Could I see the south elevation, please? Okay, all right, they're revising the fenestration, that's fine, all right. The south elevation, am I, am I to think that that is the front door? That's the back of the house. That's the back door. I'm sorry? That's the rear door, that's not the front door. The front door is to face Holbert. Okay, could I see the front door, please? That's on the north, as we're on the. Okay, apparently they're both the same. Yeah. But I understand your comment about the. Okay, either one. You want to call it the front door, change it to a different door. That is too much glass on that door. It always has been, you know, some of these applications. 
they, 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 I think they should make a change on that door. Go ahead, Lisa. That's my opinion. Yeah, okay. Thank you, John. Yeah, thank you, John. Um, Excuse me? John, did you say something about, did you say something we missed? I don't think so. The only comment I had was that door. All right, both doors it ought to be changed to another typical door. And then, okay, thank you. Okay, thank got you. it. Great. Um, who's next? I'll go. Okay, Diane. I'd like to see the building move back off the thing. I would like to see if it could be, I don't know how it got up to be 32 feet, five inches. That's too high down on that side of Albert Avenue. I'd like to see it drop down. Uh, and I don't know, it doesn't seem to have very much. You have enough room to have some one story uh, added to vasting rather everything up uh, in the view. I Because as somebody said, has to have that it goes uh, line to line. I would like to see it brought in. The houses on, on that side, on the south side of Albert Avenue are for the most part, as a general thing, smaller than the ones on the water side. And this, uh, this particular location, I think will be very, very large. I'd like to see the chimney perhaps moved over to the shorter uh, on the right hand side of it can it is sort of uh, odd where it is placed so I would like to see it moved over and uh, I don't mind the number of windows fenestration I don't mind the decks but I do mind that it's 32 feet on that side of, of the road. And I would like to see it some breaking down to being added to matching, uh, which would take off five or six feet on somewhere. Thank you for now. Thank you, Thank you Diane. So we heard from John and Diane. Um, Val? Yes. No, no, Val, I, uh, thank you, John. Uh, Val? <laughs> <clears throat> I, I appreciate all of the changes um, and I, I do agree about it pushing back a little, but I'm just, I'm just throwing this out there. Lisa, what if you flipped it so that the longer side of the building was on the interior but it, property line? I mean, uh, yeah, honestly, Dallas, because the view, the, really the, the view, and as I said in my original presentation, I don't, even though that this house sits on the other side of Holbert, it actually has a view of the water like a Holbert Avenue house. And the view is actually in that, on that side of the property. So it, it just makes more sense to have the L on that side. You know, okay. I was just um, thinking that would help sort of make it feel like it's not right on the corner. So maybe it's just the back part of that wing. I don't know. It was just a suggestion. Yeah, I appreciate it. <laughs> That's it. That's it, Val. Um, do we have an alternate, Carrie? That's, you want yeah, that, that's on me. It. Yep, okay. I'm on it. It's interesting, Val, that you said that because I was thinking the exact same thing because the left hand side of the building has a quieter a little bit smaller sort of uh, side to, you know, profile, so to speak. Um, Cause that corner, yeah, it's big. Um, but I do appreciate all the changes. I think the change to the two over twos was great. It really lightens up the whole thing. I have no problem with the doors and all the windows. Um, can we look at the site plan? Is there no way to push it back a little bit? I mean, it well, really let me just say, you know, I want to, Put, keep in mind that this house, this lot is large, is subdividable into four lots. He's subdivided into three lots. So, you know, if he's subdivided into four, you know, he wouldn't have the ability to push it back at all. Um, 
So wow. it's one of those funny zoning things that because he's making his front lot a little bit larger, um, he doesn't have a lot of room. You can see on the site plan, I think that dotted line. Mm, well, I don't know that we showed the lot, but I, I, I don't think he has a lot of space to move back, even with yeah. the, the lot yeah. that, you know, the, the plan that he's um, proposing. And again, he's not proposing to build on the other two lots, but he wants to, he bought it to take the other two lots and put them into, um, you know, kind of a, for, for future family expansion, so to speak. So, um, kind of the problem with subdividing is that you want the same size house that would be on that whole lot, but now it's on a, you know, much smaller lot and then it gives you less wiggle room. I think it seems to me like all of us think it should move back some, um, well, how much is some? I mean, I don't think they want to move it back. They certainly know, like can't, don't want to move it move it back to be out of the um, into the lower flood zone. You know, they don't want to waste the the yard. You know, to have a front yard that will never get used. They'd rather have the the lot in the back. So, you know, I think when you look at the GIS map. Um, you know, there is the lot number two, which is up close. Um, the one on the corner is up close, 38, corner of Henry and Hulbert. And it's not the only one that's up on the street. Yeah, it's the big L also, which is sort of- it's the, big, it's the biggest one. Okay, so Carrie, is that it from you? Yeah. Okay, so I, I agree with HSAB and, and, the, and my other, my fellow, um board members it's it's just it's too much building on hulbert um and if you can't reduce it side to side you know pushing it back like everybody said um i i did have a thought that you know i'd like it's kind of got some shingle style to it and i, I was wondering because it's on that corner of hulbert and will willard is there a chance that you could wrap that porch around the corner. I think it would look so, you know, more in keeping with the site to have that porch go all the way around. It would be such a, a, a great um, sort yeah, of- Yeah, we had that at one point and programmatic, programmatically didn't work out um, because it's an upside down house. We needed to retain, you know, capture that space on the second floor. Right, um, okay. but-, but, but you know, um, um, we can, I, and I wanted to point out just about the height. I mean, it, it is, you know, the zoning down there allows you by right 30 feet from the flood zone elevation. And he uh, is only 27.6. So even though that building is 32.6 from grade. I'm um, just talking about lot, line, yeah. lot, lot, lot. I'm, talk, I'm talking about the largeness, uh, sorry, the, um, the lot line to more the lot line to lot line massing the east west dimension the um yeah so so could we go to the north and elevation? also could I, let me just yes. finish up diane and because i've got five stars i have to stay here okay so i think on the second floor the fenestration is too heavy still um and it, it, it does, you don't want it to read as an upside down house. You just want it to be an upside down house. So I would, I would lighten that. Um, well, I would like to see more cottage style or shingle style um, details on it, you know, where, and I got the idea from, see how you've circled the, or squared off the top where you said you, you know how they have sort of a course of shingles that's- Oh yeah, yeah, we can do that. We've nice, done that before, yeah. You know, sort of lighten it a little bit. Um, mm -hmm. And um, let's see, yeah, move back on the property. Well, I said that. Um, I was wondering what is the height of the first floor? Um, it's at elevation 10 because it's in the-, it's in the I mean, um, I mean the, the, just the first floor, like the front door, it looks awfully, those, columns look so tall almost like you know I think like, it's a nine foot ceiling yeah I th don't you think those columns look sort of skinny and tall mm -hmm. I'd either 
it just I would fatten them up a bit. They yeah. they look a little spindly to me, and that would be another sort of give it a little more detail to it that would. Um, uh, well, that that is a detail we can certainly um, that I can agree to, a as is <laughs> changing the front door to a, a six panel. Um, the other ones are more difficult. <laughs> well, yeah. So yeah, I, and I mean, you know, you can flare stuff. I mean, it was yeah. There's I mean, a lot of fun stuff you could do with this um, yeah. to lighten it up and um, see what you can do. Um, so yeah, I would. I will, Abby, and thank you. But particularly like the fenestration on the second floor, I think that that's going to be hard to um, really to lessen just given the nature of the design. And I, I and I actually think it looks, you know, dramatically less than what we did before. And I actually think it feels it's kind of appropriate. There are some other upside down houses out there that actually have a lot of second floor fenestration. I, I just um, I just think your your design you know, if you just look at the two gambrels coming forward, the one with the 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 mold windows on the left with more shingle around it, it's it's much more um, sort of appetizing. I don't know what the word is. I don't. I can't find my words. But the one on the mm -hmm. right with the you know the four French doors. I mean, come on, you don't need four French doors up there on the on the other gambrel on the right. I'd be like, just pare that down so there's more. It looks more elegant with more shingles. It's, so I've said, I think everybody's gone around the table. Do I hear a motion to hold for a few more revisions? I'd like to hold for, for revisions. Okay, Diane. Uh, Val, on the motion. Aye. <laughs> okay, John. Aye. Carrie. Aye. Diane, on your motion. Aye. And, and I'm an aye. It will be feel better, Val. Did that include H sub? Yeah. Huh. I have to ask. I, Holly, and to go back to H sub, right, Diane? Yes. Yeah. Oh, yes. Sorry. Just to go back to H sub. And I'd just like to make a statement whether they say a building can go to 40 feet or whatever, the, the HTC can still say no. We are not required to go because the zoning board or the planning board said they go to 40 feet. We have this, the full authority to say, this is the height with that we want. And that has been written up and everything else just so that uh, we don't get into a a push and shove thing about the heights. Okay. Well, uh, I think we did it. Yep. Thank you, Lisa. Is there any more that we have to do? Um, I don't think so. Lisa may have left. Did she leave? I hope she. I do. Yeah. yeah, new dwelling, new dwelling. Now okay. we're on to five York, York. Uh, we are, yes, we're to four, five York Street. Ethan, are you on? Ethan? No. No? No, Ethan? I don't see him. Do you? Surprise. He's usually pretty good about being here. Um, um, okay, well, I guess we got to pass that over. Over representation. Yeah, um, before we do so, though, hang on, hang on one second, Diane. Is Sophie here? Yes, I'm here. Okay, good. All right, so then we don't need to hold your stuff. Good. All right, so I'm going to ask the sitting board on 5 York Street to vote on the um, Diane's motion to hold for representation, okay? On that motion, Val. Aye. Thank you, Abby. Aye. John. <laughs> John. Aye. Thank you, Diane, on your motion. Aye. And I'm in favor, so that motion carries. Okay, so that's Ethan set aside. Okay, Sophie, it's your turn. 
Great. Let's see who you have. Um, we're at seven North Mill Shed. Oh yes, right, correct. Okay, so myself, Abby, John, Diane, Carrie, and I think, do we have the same board on both of these? Let me just check. Um, Abby, John, okay. yeah, same board on both of these applications if I got that right. Okay, so the first thing that we're reviewing, although I'm sure that we're probably gonna to wanna to tie all this together is the shed officially. So Sophie, go for it. Okay, great. So your major aversion to the shed had been that you guys felt it looked a little too much like a garage and, and Diana felt it was too tall. So what we did, we made it shorter, uh, simplified all of the trim and then as you requested, made the, the shed doors, took out the glass, uh, took out the strap hinges and just made them simple V-groove doors. Okay, so what we're looking at, the first row of drawings is your earlier submission and the second, the one underneath it is what you have revised. Correct, and I just wanted to point out that the shed um, is 200 feet from Mill Street and you know, 150 feet from North Mill, I do not believe it is going to be visible at all from the Pony Farm or really anywhere. As you guys can see in the site plan, it, it tucks in there. So it's multiple feet above North Mill, but it, it's very much not going to be on display. Okay, thank you. That's it, Sophie? Yes. HSAB. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, so I, I know that there's other applications uh, before you for this property, but I do think it's important to mention their comments on the siting of all of these structures. So their comments on the siting, uh, before studying the details of the individual structures, the siting of each building should be resolved. The location of the garage is still problematic. A garage should never be placed in, the, in front of the main dwelling in the old historic district. It should be behind the house or in the location that doesn't block it view, block the view of the main house from the road. Instead, but, it is um, prominently in the front and blocking the view of the main house. The siting of all the structures should be rearranged to avoid this. Ideally, the garage would be placed where the shed is proposed. A small shed could be attached to the side of the garage for storage purposes. The site plans accompanying the shed and garage applications show how much reshaping of the natural slope of the hill is being proposed. Historically, this would not have been do done so drastically. They simply don't have the equipment to, to do the work in those days. More effort should be made to work with the existing contours and keeping the natural shape of the hill as much as possible, rather than proposing an unnatural flat plateau with a steep slope projecting out towards Mill Street. This um, much regrading of the site will inevitably result in all of the mature trees in the hilltop to be removed. To properly review the impact of these structures, height poles should be placed to show the corners of each. Uh, this used to be a, a regular request by the HTC. Surely this project justifies the use of this effective tool. On the structure itself, this may be called a shed, but it's obviously a small garage. Having uh, two garages on this property is not appropriate, and each side would uh, like res respectfully request any revisions should you be so inclined. Um, I do know that there's a Butters here in attendance this evening. Mm -hmm. We have received comments. You have all received comments. I don't know if there is any on particular for the shed or not at all. Um, but I do know that we also did receive uh, comments from the land bank on just concerns of the overall site itself. And I do believe that was sent to you all as well. So um, those are the comments, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Okay, thanks. So I will open it up to... Um, the neighbors, uh, so we all know, um, unmute, name for the record, name and address for the record, I should say. Um, who wants to start on that? Uh, I will, I'm having trouble, um, uh, there we go. Uh, can you hear me all, Joan Taylor speaking? Can, uh, can he, we can, I can hear you fine, Joan. Okay, and uh, yeah. my husband, Bill Wilmot, 16 Mill Street, okay. we are, um, we are direct abutters, um, um, by the way, as is the land bank. And I, I think what I'm going to say is gonna kind of play into hopefully giving the HDC some better tools to analyze um, the sensitivity of this site and um, what's appropriate here. Uh, so uh, Chairman Paul, I 
just want to ask, do you prefer for us in the interest of time, the neighbors, to give all of our comments at once on all three projects? Yeah, well, so, Jen, that's an interesting point because, like, I'm not sure that it's productive to review just the shed by itself right now because I think that there's a more holistic I'm going to imagine there's a more holistic concern with this. So, um, yeah, I'll invite like just a general discussion right. of everything at this point. You know, That's love to keep it right. brief, but but let's see what we could do. Okay. 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 We'll, we'll try to try to oh, be. Sorry. Wait, uh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Who, who who's who's that shouting there? Sorry, it's Sophie. I'm just wondering if you guys might benefit. So the landscape plan is the third application, and so that you guys could be speaking to the landscape plan we're proposing. Is there any benefit to to looking at that first? Yeah, actually, that's that's probably a really good idea, Sophie. Um, I just want the neighbors to understand we're proposing to plant more trees than we're tearing down. So I I don't it's I I don't know if that would be yeah if we if you guys want to view that first. Um, actually, I'm pretty familiar with it, and um, I would rather go with kind of what I planned in the overview, and I, I think the general comments will, will play into that, but I thank you, Sophie, for so, saying but Joan, here, here's what I would like, and this is for staff, whoever is guiding the uh, our, our visual presentation here. I would like to stay on the site plan. You know, there's some modifications to the shed that yes, we can discuss those, but I sort of want to hear, I want to have the site plan in front of me as I'm hearing neighbors' concerns so that I can get an overall picture. Thank you. Okay, Chairman okay. Paul, I also had sent a, a particular picture when I speak that I'd like to reference that as well. Uh, you mean like a photograph picture? Yes, yes. Um, but I, let's start with the site plan um, yeah, okay. because my comments work towards that. I think that, you know, I appreciate how difficult this lot is, and it's a beautiful lot, but 7 North Mill Street is very unusual, as you all know, for a lot in town, and I just want to make that point. It's larger than most lots. A significant portion of it is hillside and treed. It has a highly irregular shape. It abuts preserved public open spaces, and it includes ownership of a deed-restricted pedestrian lane held by the land bank, owned by the the seven north mill street but the directions in favor of the bank to provide access to mill street so that's that's that funny lane that goes out to mill street that's mm -hmm. uh abutting my property the whole way right. um so uh holly and esmeralda if one of you could pull up the picture that i sent that is just of the overview site that is labeled and no, not the view from Mill Street. This is a complete overview of the site. It's a Google Earth photo that came in with mm -hmm. my letter. You all received it. So who actually is guiding the, the visuals right now? I am, Mr. Chair. I am looking for that uh, pictures that she sent. Okay, because what we have in front of us, I believe, is still the applicant's submission. Correct, and I'm yeah. looking for that last email okay. where she had sent us pictures. Uh, okay, fair enough. Yep. You should all have the picture in your packet also to the HCC chairs, but um, it's been requested in other meetings to, to have an overview of this site and it's never really been done. So what I did was I labeled all of the open lands, all of the public ways. And I there think it's a, yeah, it's a pretty important perspective for you to get. My point here is, is that if you look, you see my house labeled 16 Mill Street, you see the two Mueller homes labeled, um, the big house up above, and um, that's cut off a little, but it is there, and then the little house. And <clears throat> I'm gonna first notate the public ways that you see 7 North Mill Street from, which is that big tree lot. Um, you see it from Mill Street for a considerable amount of the way. You see it from North Mill Street for a considerable amount of the way. You also are going to see it from Candlehouse Lane, um, Angola Street, and also um, down in the right hand corner is, um, those are more minor, but um, you do see it from those. This also gives a visual view of the Elnerham Ponyfield. 
Um, and that open land, the garden by the sea, which is the land bank has purchased um, mm -hmm. with the help of the neighborhood contributions. And in addition, the um, three lots that are the land bank preserved open fields, and then the other lot that is the land bank preserved open fields next to uh, the Mueller land. And I think that plays into what HDC is saying. Now, if you could go to the next view, please, um, that I sent, um, which is in fairness, this is a Google Earth photo. And so I sent a second photo to show the trees as of last spring, um, and also just the hill behind the land bank land. Uh, because in fairness, these photos, um, can we go to full screen on that by any chance to be able to see it? Um, no? <laughs> okay. Um, anyway, um, the Mueller's had uh, thinned out very nicely, thinned out those trees. And so I didn't want to misrepresent that this is a completely treed lot, um, but there are still a number of trees there um, that uh, are visible. That picture was taken in May of 2021. So um, basically as an attractive butter, um, I share the, many of the concerns that have been expressed by your board in your last consideration and by um, Historic Structures Advisory Board uh, most recently. And while a few of those concerns have been addressed, there are remaining concerns, many of them. I'm just gonna focus on two of the major ones in interest of time. Uh, I think that what I became aware of at the HSAB meeting, and I'm not adept at reading these maps, but that at the front of the hill, which is the north side of the hill, and if you go back to um, the, what Chairman Pohl wanted, uh, that view now, um, at the front of that hill, you see the different topography lines. And my understanding from the HSAB meeting is, is that the light lines are the existing grade, and then right. the dark lines are the to be determined grade. Well, I had never picked up that there is a four foot change of that grade from 43 feet to 47 feet. And it really made me realize that what's happening here in the creation of this large platform to try to fit these three projects in, land is being scraped out by the Mueller plot line, the south plot line, um, which I understand is a good thing to do. But on that north facing uh, line of the hill that faces the land bank land overlooks the land bank land and faces all these public ways in Mill Street, four feet is being added. And if you look even more carefully, you'll see that one of those lines existing is at 43. So mm -hmm. partly that drop is from 43 to 41. So that's only a two foot drop. But when the change is made, it's going to go from 47 to 41. So look, I'm a veterinarian, but that seems like a pretty steep drop. And I'm also a farmer who ran a 200 acre farm for many years, a horse farm. And the, drop, the secondary effect of this is it requires retainage. Um, creating that big platform requires removal of these 25 plus foot trees, which um, have been noted as adding to the character of the neighborhood, but also they are a visual butter, but even more importantly to me as a farmer, they mitigate erosion they mitigate um, drainage problems. So um, this is a concern. And um, I just heard for the first time, the HDC having similar concern, both visually and I think something that HDC, I'm requesting that you take a hard look at the manipulation of the contours of the land to this extent. And um, then the secondary concern, as I've said all the time, is really knowing what trees are gonna be preserved and what are gonna be removed. That's been asked a number of times. Uh, so those are my major concerns. I think the last thing any of us wanna end up with is coming down all these public ways where you have 180 degree view plus of this site um, and just have a big flat platform with buildings and no trees and seeing a few cars parked up there at the garage. So um, I will close with that and let um, other other people speak and um hey Joan. I, yeah Joan, thank you for that and, and i appreciate all of that a very very thorough presentation the only thing that i kind of want to 
clarify or I don't want to use the word dispute, but you said somewhere in there that this would quote require retainage, but these grade changes and they are, they are dramatic. There's no doubt about that. And, and your numbers were correct, but I don't see any retainage and what they're really doing is they're berming the soil as opposed to putting in like a retaining wall, just, just to be clear on that. Well, maybe I'm misreading it, but where the bocce ball court was removed, I believe there is still a uh, retainage uh, on the landscape plan. Maybe with, Sophie can speak to with, that. With, with grant. Um, and just, okay. just to ensure that the topo lines that we're proposing are accurate, it would really benefit you guys to look at Lindsay's landscape, which I know Esmeralda has up there. Oh boy. That okay. sort of trumps, trumps mine in terms of the topographies and- Well, the one we're looking at right now is yours, right? It is, but but obviously the landscape architect took more time in if Esmeralda can bring up his okay. building. Maybe I shouldn't have brought up the whole issue of retainage because I think that Joan's sort of overarching point is the degree of grade change. I guess that would be the best way to say it. Okay, yeah, I, so Joan, Joan you're all you. set for now? Uh, I, I am. I believe that the visual butters have um, something. Oh yeah, no, I'm not, I'm not ending it with you. Yeah. Um, okay, thank you. Uh, who's next? I'll go. No, no. Uh, <laughs> it's it's still to the neighbors, John. You'll get your you'll get your turn at bat. Um, Hello, um, Chair Chairman Paul. It's Ann Duez. I think yes. um, I think I'm coming next. Uh, Ann Duez, Five Mill Street. Um, I, um, as you know, represent our neighborhood group. And I just wanted to make it clear that the neighborhood group uh, is fully behind our ongoing efforts to get this incredibly sensitive project right. Um, Joan talked um, about some of the specifics of the, of the grading. What I would like to do is call your attention to a very clear statement in Building with Nantucket in mind about minimizing grade changes uh, that I think is relevant to 7 North Mill Street. And the statement is the following. Although it may be necessary to alter the slope to place a building on the land, it is important to maintain the continuity of the rolling terrain. This is specifically having to do with undulating moraine. The building design itself can work with the existing change in grade to minimize alterations of the gentle ground contours. A structure designed for a flat site should not be placed on a platform made by flattening a hilltop or being carved out of a hillside. Any change of the existing grade, as well as the construction of retaining walls, should be minimized and concealed. New grading should establish contours compatible with the existing landform. The quote comes from part five, building and outlining areas uh, uh, in areas of undulating moraine, which relates to new construction on larger lots. Seven New Mill Street is new construction on a larger lot with some hilly characteristics. And I think it's uh, quite relevant. Um, Seven North Mill has the further uh, critical attributes of being unique in the old historic district, highly visible, and next to a large area of green uh, open land that has been preserved uh, by the neighbors, the land bank, and um, uh, the uh, Eleanor Ham. Um, so, you know, changing the hillside by several feet, creating uh, unnatural and steep extensions of the hillside, carving out sections of the natural hillside to create terracing, um, that does not appear, that really appears to sort of contravene the, uh, the intent of the quoted section. Um, unlike uh, undulating moraine, this lot benefits from a fairly flat section to the south um, that can accommodate all of the opposed, proposed structures without making significant changes to the existing natural grade. So we do appreciate that your attention is being focused on this. I would like to ask one more thing, and that is, um, if you would permit it, for Holly to actually read the letter that was just received from the land bank, which abuts the property um, on three sides, mm -hmm. because uh, it was literally only just sent, and there's no way that you will have had a chance to look yeah, at no, it. Um, yeah, respectfully re request that. Um, and thank you very much for your time and listening, and as usual, all your work. Thanks, Ann. Um, before we have the land bank letter read in, is there anybody else in the queue that would like to speak? 
And I mean neighbors, not, not board members. Yes, Dre, Pat Bileman. Could I? Hi, Pat. I yep. ha happy to speak. Thank you for the opportunity. I'm Pat Bileman, and my husband, David Poor, and I live at 17 Mill Street. First, we appreciate the hardscape, shed, and garage have been tracked together for this meeting. All the structures on this application, including the main house, clearly impact each other and dictate many aspects of the hardscape plan. <coughs> Second, we strongly support HSAB and the HDC's previous comments. It is worth noting that the board minutes reveal that most members of both boards share our perspectives and agree with everything that has been said by the neighbors. So why are we still here, still meeting to review outstanding issues? Because the owner, the architect, and the landscape architect have not revised the drawings as they were requested to do. All of us have built on Nantucket, and we have abided by the rules and incorporated the comments of the HCC and HSAB into our application. This property should be no different. The neighbors reviewed past HSAB and HCC meeting minutes to confirm the lack of compliance with their request, and there are still many outstanding issues yet to be addressed. The overarching themes are the land is being over manipulated, shorthand for the hillside having three sets of stairs, the three sculpted flat areas that resemble rice paddies, a granite curb retaining wall, and a hedge tuttle from the bottom of the hill to Mill Street. The structures are out of character and they loom too large on the property, especially as they are visible from five public traveled ways Mill Street, North Mill Street, Angola Street. Candle House Lane and New Dollar Lane. Here are some quotes from both boards underscoring these themes. Keep in mind, these are broad themes as the outstanding items that haven't been addressed are too many to mention. And until they are addressed, we will cite them in future meetings. Quote, there are citing issues for all three structures. Before studying the details of the individual structures, the siting of each building should be resolved. An elevation of the main building and the garage would be helpful landscaping and the side of the hill should be natural. The existing mature trees should be maintained as an asset and appear as if they haven't changed for generations. Plantings are out of character, artificial, incongruent, too drastic. Plantings should have a naturalized internal feel. And finally, from Chair Paul, quote, it would be great if Mr. Singleton and Ms. Mitt holistically address concerns right raised with the garage, shed, and hardscaping, end of quote. I'd like you to look at the two photos that I sent in um, on the screen. Esmeralda, do you have those two that I sent you? You had them up before. According to the town arborist, Dave Shampoo, any construction within 20 feet of a specimen tree of these proportions will hasten their death as roots extend 20 feet from these trees. Most of the specimen trees were marked for preservation. What happened to the owner's intention to preserve them? Without these trees, the property's special rural quality would be rendered a barren monument to suburban development. On September 21st, 2021, Ms. Metz presented a tree survey with the main house application revision and noted that only three of the 34 trees are impacted by construction. This is inaccurate as the hardscape shed and garage applications show most of these trees would be demolished. Is this what we want? Is this in keeping with the natural context of the existing landscape? Is this what Chair Pohl had in mind when he requested that the concerns be holistically addressed? We respectfully request a side elevation or cross-section of the hardscape to further evaluate the impact of the landscape manipulation. We also respectfully request an elevation showing the proposed hardscape from Mill Street which will be the most highly visible view. We have elevations and aerial views of the building, but only aerial, aerial views of the hardscape. For instance, we do not know what the pergola looks like. The pergola seems to have escaped notice, but it adds to the massing of the building and the elevations have not been presented. In closing, we, as do you, strongly believe the hill should be left natural without any formal landscaping. This will help mitigate the certain destruction of many of the specimen trees and will preserve the natural aspect of the vista. Our main objection to the house, outbuildings, and destruction of the natural open landscape 
viewed from five streets is based on the knowledge that this is truly the last in-town open space of its kind on the island. If it's lost, it's gone forever. To the HDC commissioners, we appreciate all your efforts to ensure your directives are followed. It appears the applicants are hoping that you will be exhausted by the long process and eventually a flawed application will be approved. Please know that you are doing a great job. It is up to the applicants to address your directives, not to ignore them once again. Thank you. Thank you, Pat. Um, if there is no one else to speak on this, I would like Holly to read the uh, land bank letter into the record. Oh, um, Chairman Paul, may I make a quick comment? I'll try yes. to be very brief here. Yes, sorry, um, is this Joan? And, uh, and, no, Ann Lingaman Davis. Oh no, I'm sorry. Yeah, sorry, Ann, go um, ahead. Ch Chuck and I live at 15 Mill Street. And, um, uh, you know, I'm, as a preservationist myself and, and um, chair of my own historical commission, much of my time is spent figuring out ways to sort of lessen impacts on historical assets. Um, when I look at these plans, I, I can think of nothing else. Um, I'd like to express three steps that, that could be taken to maybe alleviate um, some of the impacts. Um, the first one would be to, to move the garage, and, and this was suggested at HSAB, sort of off the hill and out of the view shed. Um, I, I listened to the HSAB discussion on the 18th and, and totally agree that it should be relocated to the southwest corner of the property to get it off the hill and uh, mitigate impact. Secondly, um, the beauty of the natural hillside um, and its contours should be preserved. And, and when I speak of this, I'm, I'm speaking at, in the hardscape and, and also the contours themselves um, should be the, the, like the proposed plateau um, to accommodate multiple structures and, and, and possible subsequent retainage, sort of totally reshaping that side of the hill. Um, this sort of unnatural approach w might, you know, sh would lead to something both imposing and impactful. Um, and then finally, um, identifying and preserving the most majestic trees on the hillside would go very far to soften things. You know, why not high poles as suggested several times, or, and why not a serious tree study to figure out where the majestic trees are, how they, and how they can maybe soften things. Um, surely the time could be taken for this bit of, bit of detail. Um, thank you so much. These are my suggestions. And I, I, I appreciate, so much appreciate the time you have taken to listen to all of our concerns. Thank you. Thank you, Ann. Thank you very much. Chairman Paul, uh, yes. John, this is Joan Taylor again. I just want yes. to point something out. I know that um, HSAB suggested moving that to the um, where the shed is. Um, I have some concerns about that that I just want to put forward. Again, this is a challenging lot with the topography, and there's a very steep bank there. So while initially it looks like there may be room there, that's just something that HDC should be well aware of. And considering this, I let mean, me make sure I understand. You're saying that, like, the proposal to put the garage where the shed is, or even the shed in that location, would be no. The shed that. in that location is fine, but there's a very steep bank which is right behind my house, and I actually, mm -hmm. you know, had asked for the dwelling to be moved off of there, and I, I thank the uh, architect and, and Jake <laughs> for doing that to preserve that bank so we didn't have it caving in. But mm -hmm. uh, you know, in fairness. While that sounds really good, I mean, the topography needs to be looked at there because you can see there's quite steep, there's quite a steep hill right there. So, um, you know, you couldn't move it all the way over to where the shed is um, easily. And that's sort of just, I, I'm trying to be fair and even and, you know, sort of. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, thank you. Thank you, Joan. <laughs> Holly? Thank you, Mr. Chair. And also for the record, I do have comments from HSAB on the hardscape plan as well. Yeah, um, well, you know, it's 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 becoming clearer and clearer to me that we should probably begin our discussion not on how the hinges have changed on the shed, but more on how the whole layout of the property. So I think I might have a segue over to 
the landscape portion of this application. But um, so could we do the land bank letter just? Yes, sir. So um, Jesse Bell, the executive director of the land bank sent an email to staff this evening. Uh, it says, good afternoon, Esmeralda. The land bank owns the lot surrounding the pony field, specifically one North Mill and 14 Mill Street. We also own the garden by the sea, which is located at 14 and 16 Candle House Lane. We have received and reviewed the plan for 7 North Mill Street. We hope that throughout the HTC's review of this application, there is a general awareness that water runs downhill. With this in mind, we would respectfully ask that the proposed existing vegetation removal, topographic grade changes, and impervious surfaces are reviewed carefully. If the applicant is not taking care to provide any location for water to go within their own landscape, it will likely end up at the bottom of the hill on land bank property. Our other concern besides grade changes would be plant choices, and I don't know whether those were within the purview of the HDC. However, there is Lovegrass Meadow shown on the plan and our surrounding properties will be Lovegrass in a matter of years if that is installed, as is just voted onto the invasive species list uh, by the Massachusetts Invasive Plant Advisor Group in 2021. None of the other plant species are called out, but it would be good if they were not invasive species. We generally also agree with HTAB's comments about the rural pastoral character of the area and would hope that nothing too formal looking is approved as it would be inconsistent with the context of the neighborhood. Thank you for your consideration. Best, Jesse. Okay, thanks. Um, now, uh, as I said just before the letter was read, I think that we might wanna jump over to the landscape portion of this and maybe, um, Sophie, is Lindsay representing this or you? I, I think he intended to, but I, I think he's in transit right now. So, I, but he, Jay, Jay is here as well. So we can definitely, I can present it. Okay, why don't, why don't we give it a try? Because uh, that seems to be the more, more pressing issue here. So strap hinges, yeah. Okay, so what you guys will see here is that Lindsay is looking to me like he removed everything that the, the neighbors expressed concern and that you guys as board members didn't like um, any of the elements like the, the fire pit, the bocce court. There's, only, there's is one patio now, just a simple patio outside the pergola from the main house. Um, he does have cleared areas of grass, kind of like three little fields on the way down and granite steps. It's looking like proposed into the hillside. I'm sure if you guys did, did, you know, wanted it to be more of just like an ease path with no steps, that would be fine. The goal here was to sort of create an organic looking environment and, um, so yes, he, he stripped basically everything away. And if you guys want to propose to be adding, being very specific about the trees that you wanted to have, you know, planted back, you know, dictate the caliber, the, the size that you want to be, the height that they would be required to be, even the species. I know like that's something that I, as far as I know, Jay would be happy to do. Um, there's, Please don't feel like we're trying to clear cut this. When you know, when we first, I was being truthful and I said that the house is only taking out three trees, and we did want to, you know, try to keep that tree that Joan carries very much about on her property. But as the project evolved and we moved the house back off of the berm, like the hillside, you know, the original house. I'll remind you all that we proposed to you guys didn't mess with the topos, and we had the full foundation exposed. And you all hated that and asked that we bring in the earth at the back side of the house to create a plateau so we would hide the foundation. Because I, you know, that was the original reason we love this property that you could see out the back of the house and it would have been exposed. And that was at your request to bring in, to bring in earth and flatten out those topo lines. And now the neighbors are saying that we're manipulating the grade. So, um, Anyway, I just, so yes, Lindsay has eliminated any, any kind of special features, one small patio. We decreased uh, the, the parking area as like as little, as little uh, gravel as proposed in order to just turn the cars around. They don't extend over to that shed. Um, yeah, that's, I mean, every point that you specifically spoke to last time we tried to eliminate out. Okay. 
Thank you, Sophie. Now, uh, if, if I could say something, uh, I can wait if you want to continue with just the landscape. It's John Brazilian. I'm representing the owner. Uh, okay, so John, it's getting a little complicated because I think that at this point, I want to review the landscape and sort of the overall layout of the property. Um, right. So I'm going to invite you to make your comments now, I suppose, because after this, I want to hear from HSAB, which would be Holly. Sure. And then I want to take it to the board because the, the neighbors mainly, uh, the, the comments that were made by the neighbors mainly had to do with site layout, topography, things like that. Um, right. So that I think is sort of the, the, the foremost item on the table tonight on this application, but go ahead, John. Okay, I'll try to be short. I mean, just as a reminder from my perspective on, on this and the, the owner's perspective, you know, starting out largest lot, most expensive, uh, smallest house, um, planning board approved it as a subdivision. I, I, I saw uh, noted with interest, um, Ms. Taylor's overview photograph which showed the hilly lot with all the trees. But I also noticed that, you know, all the surrounding ruts, everyone has their house. There's a lot of cut uh, and, and cleared land around it. And it's kind of like if you come late to the party, uh, you know, and you're used to seeing those trees, I get it. But it's not a public park to begin with. The the house and the, and the garage, the house initially, uh, could have had, had a footprint of 4,000 square feet. It's down to 2,000. The, as you well know, the, the garage was moved 30 feet down. It was relocated. It was rotated. Um, you know, the, the idea there was about layout, that it was too close to the house. The architect and the owner did what was requested and they moved it away. Uh, there was some suggestion that the garage ought to be where the shed is but that would have been worse visually. Um, there, are, there are other uh, photographs which have been presented to the board um, of other garages in this area. Most of them are closer to Mill Street, are more visible. This one is more than 100 feet back. Um, yeah, it's, it's, there's gonna be some visibility, um, but as, as Sophie said, uh, there are more trees that are gonna be planted. Um, I'm not sure, um, you know, what is supposed to be done here um, and still have a buildable lot. I mean, as I said, it was, it was approved as a buildable lot. Um, there have been many concessions made. Um, and, and, you know, it, of it course, can. anyone that's got a house there wants it to be as many trees as they can have there. And, and I don't think that that's reasonable. And I don't think that it's something that is um, completely within the purview of the board because I'm not sure that it's been proven that some of these trees or many of these trees are of the variety or type that have to be preserved. And it looks like from the landscape plan, and I'll finish up, you know, that they've done quite a bit um, by way of, of keeping as much green space as possible, but the neighbors just have to understand that there, there's going to be a house there and it's still the smallest house um, up there on the largest lot. So um, th those are those are the points that I just think ought to be kept in mind, um, you know, when the rest of the points are being made by the neighbors, that's all. Okay, thank you, John. Yep. Okay, and, Holly, uh, it's you. Chairman Paul, it's just, I'm sorry. Chairman Paul, Chairman Paul I'm, I'm sorry. When I hear something that is not uh, correct, no, I would like- Joan, I'm sorry. Like, he was making a simple point about the trees. So let's let's keep this, uh, civilized. Um, and uh, got your hand up. Uh, yeah, this is Jay Hanley. Um, no, no, Anne had her hand up and I recognized her. Oh, okay. I'm sorry, Chairman Paul, that was a mistake. I oh, apologize. that was a mistake. Okay, so Jay, it's sorry. time quickly. Okay, yeah, I'll, I'll be very quick here, guys. Um, you know, it feels like I'm sort of public enemy number one, and that and that's fine. Uh, I want to sort of dial it all the way back to, to when I purchased this lot. I want to be very clear about what I fell in love with. Um, I absolutely was on the market for, for a decent amount of time. 
I walked it probably 50 times and I fell in love with the trees. The same thing that all the neighbors who John correctly points out, um, you know, they have theirs, they have their house and they would like to continue looking up at uh, a hilly uh, and, you know, a, a, a treed hillside. But I fell in love with the trees. Um, I specifically spoke to the gentleman, the family that, that sold me the lot, uh, Henry Mueller. I asked him specifically about all of the trees on the lot. As Joan said, uh, the Mueller's did take down a number of the trees. Perhaps it was for the health of the trees, but there was no consideration given to these trees when the Mueller's took them down. There was no process, there was no nothing. Um, you know, Henry told me point blank, I grew up here, I grew up on this land in the 70s and 80s, these trees simply weren't here. They are, there's no significance whatsoever. They are rats. Now, nonetheless, I love these trees and I will do what I, what I can uh, to preserve them. Um, to offer a couple of things up, uh, it, you know, as we go through this, I would say that the, the tiered backyard going down the hill, I don't need any of that. I'm happy to keep that all natural. Um, I'm okay with, with sort of removing the shed and, and sort of tabling that for a later discussion and, and moving the garage, making it smaller and putting it over where the shed is. Um, all due respect to, to Joan, um, it wouldn't get too close to the, the gradient that she's talking about. And that gradient is entire, entirely on number seven. It's not on her property. It would potentially affect her, yes. And we recognize that by moving the house over. Overall, it feels a little bit like, as Sophie was referencing, we're, we're damned if you do, damned if you don't, meaning we went in with a house that was the very cognizant of the hill and keeping the natural terrain, and we were asked to do something different. Then we were asked to lower the house as much as we could, so we felt like cutting that into the hill a couple of feet was the right thing. So it feels like we're in a maze. We're trying to figure our way out. We're doing the best we can. I want to preserve as many trees as I possibly can and build a house that's been approved and simply add a garage. As far as landscape, very happy to work with the land bank and determining species. I don't need all these tiers and these steps. Looks very sexy. I'm happy to keep it a, uh, a hillside. And that's all. Thank you, Jay. Yeah. Um, okay, so before I hear from the board, on everything, and I'll go into detail on that in a moment, but I do want to hear from Holly on the HSAB comments on the landscape. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, from staff's perspective, I do want to just mention that I do appreciate the removal of the bocce court fire pit patio stepping stones, and this is much a much better proposal. So overall, thank you for that. Uh, HSAB took a look at these uh, the, this revision on January 10th. This should be reviewed along with the proposed revisions to the garage and shed, which is being done. The plan does not show which trees are being removed and which are staying. This plan should show the existing contours relative to the proposal proposed. That will clearly in, in illustrate how much this hill is being manipulated to create a huge level plateau for all three of the buildings. In particular, the north side of the new plateau is being raised four feet above existing and will have a very unnatural steep slope facing Mill Street. It is inevitable that all of the existing trees will need to be removed in order to level the property as proposed. The following were previously listed as a concern and still are. The overly manipulating the existing contours of the hill to create a large flat plateau for the three structures. The existing slopes should remain as, um, as much as possible. Terracing the north slope for unusual pocket lawns connected by granite steps. The natural slope should remain. Surrounding the entire property with privet hedge is too formal. Screening should be provided with intermittent clustered natural looking plantings. Uh, carving into the hill for a stone wall retained driveway is too formal and very inappropriate for the old historic district. The stone walls could be eliminated by keeping the driveway close to the existing slope and providing small berms if needed. The parking area should not be in front of the house. Keep it along, keep it to the side close to the garage. I think that's been worked on. The stone walls to the north and south of the house should be eliminated and allow the grade to slope naturally. Very little has changed from the original proposal. This design is, is still much too formal and changes the shape of the hill too drastically. This should be reconsidered with a new concept that respects the natural slope of the hill 
and the rural quality of the area adjacent to the pony field. And as always, each tab does respectfully request any uh, revisions back that the commission is so inclined on. Those are their comments, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Okay, Holly, thanks so much. Okay, so um, I think I have a path forward on this and that is we've heard from the neighbors and they've made clear what their concerns are. Um, we have also heard from the applicant, uh, Jay, who has mentioned a few things that I, that I think are particularly um, uh, worthwhile to know. One, the idea that the shed could be taken off the table. Two, the idea that the garage could be moved and reduced in size. Three, that all of, uh, if we're looking at this site plan, that all of that area to the north of where the house is, where we have the terracing and formerly the bocce court, et cetera, et cetera, and trees, by the way, um, that that could all go and become naturalized. So I think that what I would like to do right now is to hear from the board, the sitting board members on all three of these applications that I mainly want to hear uh, what your views are on the landscape, the grading, the layout of the buildings on the site, those sort of things that sort of will inform how the site plan uh, finally winds up. And then we can subordinate the discussion on the shed, which may go to heaven, and the garage, which may get smaller. So board members, it's your turn now. And as I say, I would really like you to concentrate your comments on major site layout type issues. Who would like to begin? I'll, I'll take a stab at it. Thank you, Abby. You're very brave, thanks. Well, uh, well, I'm only brave because of the last couple of things you said that the shed may go to heaven, you said, and the... Um, the what is it a garage guest cottage is going to be shrunk uh, i think it's just a garage right jay it's a garage with a studio above it oh okay there you go abby yeah, we got, there you go. because the yeah the elevations are a little large so i'm assuming there's a living space above so there is. but if that gets shrunk and the shed goes away the only thing i'm left is 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 would be to going down the hill. I'd love to see that remain as a naturalistic. I, I can imagine if I own this property, I think what they were trying to do is, is to have an exit that from the house that would meet up with uh, Mill Street. And um, so I understand that. So they would have, but it could be very naturalistic and very beautiful. So. I think if it was done right, you know, nix the bocce, nix the fire pit and get very naturalistic. It could be a very, a wonderful landscape design. Um, and that's what I have for starters. Great, Abby, well said. Thank you very much. Uh, Diane, you, you wanna go now? Sure, I'll go. Okay. Uh, I would like to know what the what the species of trees are and how many are specifically going to be cut. I I don't think that all the trees are only up on that hill. They fall down, come down, and it is is not terribly naturalistic. I appreciate the shed going. I have asked for ever since the first time I saw it that the dwelling be moved, but it doesn't seem to ever have been moved. I think that that the amount of material that's being added to make a flat plateau is something we should know. The, the HCC has always been, <coughs> well, since I've been around, has control over the amount of land that can, or soil that can be added to raise or lower a specific place. And I would like to know how, how much 
not having to try and read the lines, whether they're theirs or whether they're original. I would like to know what it is. I think four and a half feet of, of soil to make a plateau, a plateau flat is, is not a sensitive uh, management of the land. I, <clears throat> it, it needs to fit into the area and whether you walk the place for 50 times or 100 times, the trees in this respect and in other respects in the, in the surrounding area, uh, Prospect Street and whatever, the trees are, which has a great deal to do with our, our what is here, excuse me, I can't think. Uh, it helps clear the, clear the air. It, it helps when they are all in leaf and are going, it keeps the place cooler. It breaks the window, wind. There are things to be considered. If we're doing landscape, let's look at the landscape and, and see <coughs> what has to be moved to take down a 150 year old tree and put up a, a four and a half tree, four and a half inch stem tree is not a solving the problem. It will take a long, long time. And I think I appreciate that the stairs would be removed and, and have it flow, not have these weird little shapes coming down. That's not the way the land goes. It, it uh, just make it open and, and make it so it is nice, but don't have such defined spaces. And, and what's going to be planted in the low spots? I think the most important part is the number of trees that are there now, the number of trees that are going to go down, the moving of the shed, the moving of the garage, making the, the driveway coming in less and working with what exists there for planting. So there, that's for now. Okay, Diane, thank you very much. Let's see, how about you, Carrie? Um, I really appreciate it if the garage moves away from that east side and goes to the west. So it seems to me that the house needs to shift a little bit. But I do think that sort of compiling the buildings rather than sprawling them out across the top of the hill would be, it would better serve uh, North Mill Street and Mill Street if it was tucked to the, to the Southwest corner. Um, but I do think the house might have to shift a little bit. This plan is really um, a good one to look at because you can see where the grade has a, a steep drop to the Northwest and they're creating this steep drop all the way across the north all the way to the east. And I think that's not necessary. I'm hoping that can be mitigated and maybe there's a no build zone or not a no build zone, but a no disturb zone to the south just to allow the landscape to be natural and be what it is rather than introducing new things to it. Because I think that's part of the whole sort of environment is the fact that you're not, you know, you you don't you don't want to add landscape to this beautiful natural environment. If you're gonna do any landscaping, do it to the south where you know the general public is not really seeing too much of it. Um, that's it. Okay, thanks, Carrie. John. John. I'm right here, Mr. Chairman. I'm, I'm yeah. going to pass on this. Thank you. Okay. All right. Fair enough. So I have a few things to say. And I, I was feeling um, a little hopeless until um, Jay made his appearance and offered what I think are some potential ways out of this, uh, this problem. Um, first of all, 
when I look at this plan with the rather dramatic grade change, um, and I will, let me start there. Right now, Sophie has created a platform, like seriously a level platform. She's cut on the South and she's filled on the North. And I was present of course for the first application and you know the few after that where basically they were working with the existing grade and the result was that the low side of the house, the north side, was sticking way out of the ground. And so he said, well, that's no good because now that looks awful and, and why don't you grade up to the house? So that is true. But I think that there's an in-between where you don't have to go with exactly the natural slope of the land, but you berm up slightly, but you still have the land pitch. Um, and that would uh, eliminate more of the problem that we were having with the initial application and the, and the height of the north elevation of the house. But it would also not go so far as to create this level platform that of necessity is creating this very, very steep uh, decline as we go further north. By the way, I believe it was Pat Bioman who mentioned the idea of site sections so that I think whatever landscape plan comes back to us, I think that there should be two or three site sections showing existing and proposed grade so that we can get a fuller understanding of these things. But now what I'm hoping is that um, we would see less grade change on the north side and more naturalized. And now I'm gonna get back to the trees. So several things kill trees. One is when you excavate for a building, you over dig by 20 feet all the way around the perimeter of the building. That's any one of these three buildings right here. So if you take a 20 foot sort of envelope around each of these buildings, all the trees within those envelopes are going away. Go on. They're all going away. And anytime you have any more than one or two feet of grade change, even if you put a uh, tree well around an existing tree, when you add that much soil over top of the root system, it smothers the tree and the tree dies. So all that is to say, by the time you look at changed grade plus building excavations on this site, uh, you know, and the driveway and all that, that there are gonna be very few of the trees left. I think the trees, by the way, are honey locusts, which are fortunately very, um, they're uh, trees that do really, really well on Nantucket. They grow fast. So I think that the proposal, I think Sophie mentioned, and maybe Jay may have reiterated that the idea would be to restore a lot of the trees because the fact of the matter is a lot of those trees are going to go away, particularly with the scenario the way it is now. Now, if Jay, if, if Jay follows through with the idea of really keeping the area to the north of the house more naturalized, meaning the grade wouldn't be as dramatically affected, then some of the trees would be able to live and stay just the way they are. And I also think it would be a lot more palatable to the neighbors, not having so much kind of like uh, goo gaws associated with the hardscape. Like the, the, you know, the bocce court, which, you know, is gone now, but that was kind of a step in the right direction. So those are my thoughts on the landscape. I also really appreciate the fact that uh, Jay and company have sort of offered up the olive branch of the loss of the shed and the, and the um, um, downsizing of the garage. So that's it. Th those are all my notes. Um, so I, I see a glimmer of hope in, on the horizon. Um, so would somebody like to make a motion on this? And that motion, of course, would it include uh, sending whatever revisions are made back to um, HSAB. And also, I would like, well, once we get a motion on the landscape, I'd like to have the garage and the shed to track. I will put in a motion 
to hold for revisions and the revisions being sent to back to Hashab. Okay. Before that's coming nice. back to us. Yeah, that sounds great. Thanks, Diane, for that. On that motion, Carrie. Can we add site sections to those revisions? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. Right. I think that's important. So yeah, that's added to we, the motion. Um, uh, Oh. Uh, Carrie was an I. Thank you, Abby. Yeah, uh, I. And does it have to go back to H Sab? Yeah, it's it's that's in there. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Good. Okay, John on the motion. John. John there. Yeah, he is. John. Yes, sir. There's a motion um, to hold for revisions plus more information. Are are you in favor? Please say yes. I'm thinking. Thank you. <laughs> well, don't think too long. Um, let's see, Diane, you made the motion. Uh, you're in favor yep. of your motion. Okay. Yes, yeah. I am. Okay, yes, great. And John, did I just hear you say yes? So was this? This is on. The motion was on what number? Because it's well, clear. okay. Sorry, it's a little little confusing, but it's number eight. It's the hardscape. And you're gonna ask about the two that precede it and those motions, the, I'm gonna get a motion next to have those two track the landscape right. plan. This is on landscaping? Yes. 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 All right, I'm gonna pass. <laughs> okay, we'll, we'll chalk that up as an abstention. So I'm in favor. So the motion carries four in favor, one abstention. Now, okay, now we want to have a motion for the shed and the garage to track with the landscaping. Correct. Thank you. Okay, so Diane has made that motion. On that motion, Carrie. Aye. Aye. Thank, thank you. Abby. Aye. Thank you, John. John. I'm uh, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. <coughs> okay, so you're abstaining on that motion as well. I'm not and abstaining. What? Get that for the minutes. I'm yeah. passing on the application. That doesn't mean I'm abstaining. Uh, John, yeah. if you you're sitting do, on it, you have to make a decision. You Are you opposed, abstained, or voting? There is right. no such thing as passing. That does not exist. Thank you. John, let's just register you as an abstention, okay? It's tantamount to passing. Yeah, that's the same thing. Whoa, hang on. John? Yes, sir. Are you abstaining from this motion? No. Oh, I'm not yeah. abstaining. From uh, okay, anything. but you need to do one of three things for us, friend. You either need to vote in favor of the motion, in opposition to the motion, or abstain. Those are your three choices. Okay, no comment. That's fine. I'm going to register that as an abstention, and maybe I'll get into trouble, but Don't that's what I'm going to do. Not, okay, so um, let's Thank see, you, Diane, on your motion. Ray, Ray, I will also register that as an abstention. Thank you, dear. Thank you. Uh, and Diane, um, on your motion. I, 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 I. Very good, and I'm in favor, too. So that motion carries four in favor, one abstention. Okay. Thanks, everybody. I know it's a difficult project. We'll get through it. Um, thanks for your time, to all of you. Um, okay, let's see what else we can do. We got... You're coming back to 5 York, correct? Oh, oh yes. Thanks, Linda. I'm so sorry. I, I kind of lost track. So Linda is actually here to represent uh, 5 York Street, which was down as Griffin Architect. So let's go back to that. And the board I believe... That is, oh, what? yeah. Who's on this, by the okay, way? Okay, it's myself. Abby, John, Diane, and Val. Okay. Um, okay, go I, for it. Where is it in the list? Uh, it was it's just before this. Spot. No, I mean on the list of items for the agenda. Number five. Just before this one. The link. Number five. There you go. It was before the uh, this whole mess that we just we, went through. Hey, Val, we passed over it because Ethan was, oh, she's good. 
Got While it. sick and her, and her voice is terrible, so she's muting all the time and just using sign language. Anyway, so <laughs> go ahead, Linda. All right, I believe the last time it came in, you wanted uh, kick panels on the French doors. We I, did. And you, he put them on there. All right. Then you wanted, uh, you didn't like the pergola, he got rid of it. Also and good. He appreciated the, placing the non-visible Patagon. Oh, they changed that window out and put in a six light on the south on the side elevation oh, that thing yeah. yeah yeah he they didn't like that and uh, i think that's it he oh, did all the changes you asked him to hey that sounds good do we have eight sab on this i don't think since the I, first I saw it today yes they did they looked at this in december then they looked at it on january 18th um my <laughs> they indicated that it wasn't clear what was being um applied for so i'm not too sure what what that reason is but they did say that the street view shows an existing 12 light with a kick panel door already in place um i believe the comments that uh was originally raised about the pergola being appropriate obviously that's a moot point now correct um and really and truly it was more or less the the concern about the french door facing york street um but. Okay, so what, I, what I'm pretty sure is the case, and Linda can corroborate this, but I think we have an existing French door there that's a 15 light, and he changed it out to a 12 with a kick panel. Yep. And somebody needs to mute their, their um, YouTube. Okay. And he went to the um, six light on the side instead of that, that odd, right. unusual window. <laughs> Correct. And Mr. Okay. Chair, just for the um, the record, this is a contributing structure built in, in actually 1796 for Ooh. Benjamin Sylvanius Folger. Um, okay. Yep. He built a. He had a lot of houses here. I, I yes, can't he believe that, that 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 they had. He had uh, 15 light French doors no. in his quiver back then. <laughs> no, probably so. not. There's probably been a lot not. of uh, a lot of probably changes not. to this structure over time. Yeah. Okay. So I think it's pretty clear to us. Thank you, Holly. Who would like to begin the discussion on this one? I will. Thank you. Um, so I was actually was always in favor, favor of the pergola because I thought it disguised <sighs> the French doors. So whatever. Um, we could be coming back for it, but right now it was just to make it simple because nobody wanted it there. We took it off. Yeah. Yeah. I understand. I was the kick panel lady. Um, so, but what about that far right one? Is that is that viewable from the road? The far the right. The it's far there. Right doors on the far it's right. It's there. It's, it's already there. So, I I adore this build. I think this is the cutest little cottage, and <laughs> I have nothing else to say. Oh well, that's <laughs> laudatory. Thank you. It is really oh. cute. Yeah. Okay. Um. So, Abby, thank you for that. Diane, you ready? Yep. I. I agree with what's been done. I'm glad you mentioned how old it is because I don't think people realize it. And uh, there were five kids in this house <laughs> growing up. So <laughs> it's, okay. it's been a good thing. I think it would be good to kick panels. I like, I think we looked at this the last time and there was a bush or something that was in front of that those French doors. That's right. Yes. Yeah. yeah. The, the owners a couple of years ago that bought it, I know the owners, and they did an awful lot of renovation to it. They fixed it, the foundation. Okay, they Linda, it. thank you. I appreciate that. <laughs> Let's it's move cute. it along. Okay, <laughs> thanks. Um, so, Diane, you're good? Yeah, I think. All right, thank you. Uh, let's see, Val Oliver. I appreciate the changes making the 15 light of door with kick panels and the six light window i'm fine with this okay very good john and just anything? for the record 76 mm. pleasant had 11 kids in that house my grandparents <laughs> wow <laughs> um thank you val john anything on this application oh it looked fine to me all right, like it. I'm trying to try to look at it. Just, Somebody want to make a motion? Motion to approve is submitted. Oh, there we go. Modified. Yeah, as modified. 
as modified. Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. So that is uh, Diane's motion on the motion. Val. Aye. Thank you, Abby. Aye. Very good, John. Aye. Uh, yes. Uh, where, where, where is it? What number is the? It's the uh, five yard street. I can't find it on the uh, okay. agenda. It's Sorry. number five on the agenda on old business of January 11th. Number five, we passed over it. And now we're coming back. But it sounds like you're in favor of it, John. There is a motion on the table. Number, number five? Yep. Okay. Under, that's what I'm looking for. John, are you in favor of oh the motion? Oh my God. To approve it. I got myself. John. <laughs> I get it. All right. Thank you. Yes. yes. Thank you. I, I, I register that as a as a yay vote. Okay. I believe Diane made the motion on the motion. Aye. Thank you. And I'm in favor of motion carries. There you go, Linda. Thank you. But I'm okay. here for Tom Tom right. as so we now, get down. Let's see. We're gonna move along to uh 80 Surfside Road, I guess. And do we have somebody to represent 80 Surfside Road? Yes, Mr. Chair, I'm Tom Dimov for the applicant. Did you enjoy waiting? Yes, yes. it was very entertaining. It was fun, wasn't it? <laughs> it was, it was. All right. This is the Ho most entertaining show on television. Um, Ho hopefully this next application will be a bit boring. We're like the friends, friends of, of the 21st century. Um, okay, so what do you got on 80 Surfside? Oh, you have an existing board, myself, Abby, John, Diane, Val, and you have two applications, and it is the same board on both. So let's talk first about the new dwelling. dwelling. Okay? Yes. <clears throat> so this is an application for a new dwelling. Uh, this is the right. third time, the third time that it's in front of you. Um, uh, the changes that are presented on sheet number four, please, uh, whoever is driving, are driven from the comments from the previous meeting. Um, uh, the, I think Diane had uh, had a, um, well, I'm actually, I, I don't think actually that's the proper PDF. That's the previous. Uh, it is the previous, yeah. First, it started out as a gambrel, then it went yes. to this. Oh, there, and there you go. Something that, that supersedes this, I believe. Yes. Um, I'm kind of... Bear with me. I'm looking for the right one. Okay. Sure. Yeah. Hey, Anton. But, but it's, yep. I can you, keep kind of verbally expressing well, what, what I was going to suggest is can you screen share? Yeah, I can screen share. All right, so if we allow you to screen share, then you can show us the most recent, the latest and the greatest. Definitely. Okay. All right. All right, there we go. Right. Yep. So, Diane had made a, a comment about the front door. I'm going to start with the west elevation, which is the facade of the building, uh, yep. you know, looking towards um, Surfside Road. Um, so Diane made a comment about the front door, which we revised based on her comment. Um, the comment was about the side lights being, having light all the way from the floor to the, mm -hmm. to the top of the door. So we introduced a lower panel. Um, the other comment that Commissioner Coombs did was the gang windows on the um, north elevation oh, first, yeah. on the first floor. We separated mm -hmm. those uh, for the com comment. Um, there was a notion about the height of the building or comment about the height of the building, which we um, successfully reduced by one feet. Um, and we took some of the, some, some inches from the first, from the height of the first floor um, and the idea was to um, have the, the eave of the main roof um, at the same elevation as the meeting rails of the windows. Perfect. Uh, for the other comments of, I think John made the same comment. Right. Um, the other comment that John made was about the dormers and he wanted to see them set back. Um, 
I was able to do that only to the on, on the right one. If you're looking at uh, my, if you can see my cursor here circling, um, I cannot set back the other dormer. No, because... flush, the flush dormer you simply cannot set back. It it just doesn't yeah, work. Yeah, right. Um, but I did do it on that one just simply because this is the staircase um, and there's a bedroom on the other side. Um, but I have a, um, a window, a egress window on the gable end. Um, so I was able to do that as well, okay. uh, there too. Um, Val made a comment about um, putting a door on the north elevation. Um, we did uh, Nuro with that idea and the owner, but sim simply because the idea for the property is to block um, the first floor from Surfside Drive with evergreen vegetation, mm -hmm. um, you won't be able to see that elevation or I, I, I feel like not the whole thing. You'll be able to see the, the, the building for sure, but I feel like the first floor will be blocked by that evergreen vegetation. Um, okay. And with that, you know, I welcome, welcome any comments and, you know, hoping for a um, discussion. Approval? Yeah, yes. <laughs> Are we all? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I guess. Um, uh, so thanks for the very thorough presentation. You covered all the bases. Okay, I'm gonna open it up to the board now. I'm ready. All right, go. Uh, <clears throat> Anton, thank you for the um, the changes. I still have some major concerns about its proximity to the road, but um, if the screening <clears throat> is as you show on this plan, I'm sure it will be mitigated by that, although it is gonna be the closest building to the street in the whole area. Um, and with regard to that north side, the flush dormer, mm -hmm. the windows are floating in the dormer. So I think you need to lose some um, height there or put a freeze board or something. It seems as though they're- Do you right. mean, do you mean- uh, yeah. Do you mean the head between the head casing and the E? Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. You see you how? I can. Yeah. I can. I can. I can work that. I can work with the dimensions of the freeze board and the, the top plate of the dormer. Um, and neat. So I'm assuming <laughs> what we want. What we want to do is um, lower the freeze board so it can meet the. Correct. Oh, and then so you don't have shingles. I, I'm, I'm totally fine with that. And then the little weird transom windows are sort of an anomaly too. It would be better if those were a little bit bigger or something, but really mm -hmm. mostly it's the proximity to the street because there isn't anything in the oh. whole street that like that. So that's it, Mr. Chair. Okay. Thank Mr. you. Mr. Chair, can I comment on that or well, a chance later? Let, let, why, why don't you hold your sure. comments yep. till you hear from everybody, okay? Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, I think it'll be simpler that way. Thank you. Um, how about you, Abby? Hi. Um, so I was just looking at those north and south dormers uh, with just the two windows with the very heavy lid. Um, they look a little odd. I, I, uh, I don't know what to do the, about them. I actually preferred the flush dormer, to be honest with you. Mm -hmm. Right here. You know, it could be a little smaller or something, but. Yeah, looks that little looks bit... a little more uh, real. Rendered... I think it's the space above the windows on that older one. That yeah. Was... yeah, there was a lot of space between the window and the eave, but continue, Abby. Sorry. Yeah, if that could come. Yeah. Right, so the flush dormer would be a better solution. Uh, sorry I that you so. had to do that. But, and when Diane says separate the ganged windows, I think she means a little more. Like that looks like you, you did exactly what you said, you separated them, but they maybe just space them in a sort of 
you know, a, you know, with a certain amount of space in between the windows to make them work. Um, mm -hmm. You catch my drift. Do you? Yeah. Yeah. The reason why. I'm sorry. Yeah? Go I ahead. Apologize. Apologies. No, no, yeah. go ahead, Anton. Um, yeah, there's a, there's right. a, this is the, you know, and there's a stove um, okay. in between that. So the hood ideally will be there, um, but I can try to separate them a little bit more. Can I make uh, a suggestion, friend? Yes, please. If we go back to the plan, mm -hmm. instead of taking the middle windows and moving them closer together, why don't you take the outer windows and move them further away? I can do that. Because, because you still have room for an upper cabinet there. You got plenty of space for your 13 inch mm -hmm. deep upper cabinet without any. Yep. Yep. So that would accomplish the goal without you having to compromise the oven thing. Yep. I can All do right? that. I can definitely do that. Okay. Yeah, I, I think spacing those differently would be good. And um, Val's better on this thing about being off of Surfside Road than I am because I don't, I can't, I'm not bringing this, this site up in my mind. So, um, but yep. if, if, if that is the, the norm, I would like to see it uh, push back just a little bit, just give it a little more room. Um, Val, to be clear, were you talking about proximity to Surfside Road or Surfside Drive? Whatever the road Third is. Surfside Drive. Drive. Yeah. yeah. So whatever. I'm, if that's not the norm on Surfside Drive, then I would bring it into the property a little bit. Um. Yeah. Hey, Anton. Yep. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So let's just, you know, uh, mm -hmm. you don't really get a full picture of where people are until you hear from everybody. So True. if you're, you know, if you rebut everybody, you're going to have a thousand different people telling you. Yeah, yeah, things. that's just my opinion. Yeah, that's yeah. all I got. Okay, okay. thanks, I'll Abby. Uh, let's go. see. Oh, Diane, yeah, go ahead. I, w I wanted to ask him, Anton. Is, yes. is the driveway really that big? Um, it's it's a proposal for a driveway. It doesn't exist right now. Um, the driveway that exists at the moment is um, this odd kind of yeah. half car parking space up the streets. Right. Um, I, but we're... that I think that's too big mm -hmm. to have big space i'd rather see lawn uh yeah. than than all that driveway because it's yeah. a it's a huge amount of of driveway that you got there and it's not you're putting in a new thing on that particular corner that's not been there before so making it as natural because surfside drive is is pretty loose and uh, Surfside Road right there, that corner is is not too heavy. So if that's, I appreciate what else you've done. I'm with uh, Val as far as trying to get it away from Surfside Drive, uh, but I would like to see that parking space, driveway or whatever reduced considerably okay yeah um i do have a hardscape application specifically for that that is going to follow this application and oh that's you know, interesting so. right so that the the amount of driveway is not really under review but he's taken it under advisement diane yeah yeah okay thank you diane um mr mclaughlin are you with us i am here all right, what do you say about this one? Comment about it? Yeah. It, it's well enclosed with a lot of shrubbery, I know that. Yeah. That's for, that's for sure, yes. Okay, could we go, 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 go up three notches, please? On the, uh, three notches on the south elevation, please.
Okay, John. Yeah, that's what I wanted to look at, you know. The, uh, I, I find no problem with it. It's a nice, nice drawing. It looks nice. Okay, John, thanks. I, I kind of feel the same way. Um, you know, I already said that I preferred the flush dormer over the one that looks like a little gun turret. Um, I don't actually recall that being a comment, and it may have been something that was misconstrued because John is ordinarily asking about having the eave line up with the part of the uh, uh, parting oh rail of the sash, which Facial you've problem. done, which you've already done. So that part's solved. So really, uh, you don't need to please me on this one. Uh, I'm pretty good. So what do we want to do with this one, folks? Want to have a motion to approve is submitted, or do you want to have minor revisions? Well, so you know what just occurred to me, Diane? What? Anton seems amenable to making more separation on those first floor windows, yep. uh, which Abby was in favor of. Um, Let's do for minor revisions. Well, I hate to hold them up if we can approve this, you know, with some certain things. And I think I'll make approve. a motion to approve if Diane just, doesn't want to. No, I'm, I'm fine with it, but I thought we could approve through staff if we tell them what we want, don't you think? Yeah. Right. So... Again, I, I would be in favor of any kind of motion, including a motion to approve as submitted, by the way. Um, so anything that you guys want to do. Um, Mr. Like, Chair. Yes. Sorry to interrupt. Um, I'm actually inclined to, um, I do feel the same way about the setback dormer versus the flush dormer. So I'm totally open to bring the flush dormer back if that's better fit uh, for you guys. Well, I know that I'm in favor of that. I don't know who else is. Uh, well, let's make that the motion to approve to staff with the dormer being made flush and the windows on the first floor left separated. Or more separated. More separated. Yeah. And okay. What, what about and the, 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 the setback from the Surfside Drive, though? Are we going to have... We, I can we, push the building another feet. Uh, yeah. But that's pretty much one the, foot. Yeah, because um, I have a four feet, which is a. a okay, you small. don't need to explain why, but so yeah. you're you're offering up one foot further away from surface. Yeah, and I'll and I'll be up like the minimum separation between the buildings, which is oh, right. okay. And okay. included in that and that uh, is the moving of the building one foot away from the surfside drive can we i'm so sorry to this can we make it six inches because it's really uh, making me nervous uh, it's it's just 10 feet this is ridiculous it's, i'm oh, so God. sorry yeah so sorry it's just um look the, if it's six inches who the hell cares i mean it's gonna okay be, for, like, hey. fine wait don't i'm, I'm I, I guess what I'm suggesting is not moving it at all. Like moving it six inches is inconsequential. It's ridiculous. It's inappropriate. So, Val, Val. Oh, I don't care what the motion is. I'm voting no. It's not a good position. It shouldn't be oh, there. Okay. So, so you're you're going to be out. Like okay, all right. So I think that the best way to proceed would be to um, yeah, hold for revisions. Oh, that's See, unfortunate he, after all that. But yeah. okay, so I'm Abby's sorry, made a motion. It's just that, it's just that um, no, I, if you guys think it's fine, it's up to you. I think the building is okay. It's inappropriately placed on the lot to so do it. So, just, um, sorry, I forgot your name. Who is that? Uh, Anthem. 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 It, yeah. it, it, when you look at the site plan, yeah. Look at the site plan. Is there any way to move all of that to the whatever? What yeah. It? So the, the, there's an existing oh. building on the lot. Right. And okay. um, the, the idea behind the design of this property is to tuck the building 
all the way to the back of the property as much as possible, um, considering the Surfside Trophy is the front of the property. Um, I, have, um, I have to separate the building by 10 feet uh, by law, by, by law. And I have a four feet roof um, yeah. covered porch, no, which I, brings me at, at which brings me at eleven feet. You know that one feet is the cushion that I was hoping to. And when I said one foot, I apologize. It might might have been yeah. the purpose of this. I I totally agree that like cutting it that close is is dangerous for yeah. you. Um, so. Yeah, you, you shouldn't be you shouldn't be yielding to that one. And by the way, I like the porch, so I wouldn't want not want the porch to go away, so that you could move the building further away from Surfside Drive. But we seriously have to move this along. This is getting kind of yeah. ridiculous. No, not yeah. really, because we're going. Yeah, get yeah, behind. really, it's getting ridiculous. So somebody make a motion. Chairman, make a motion to approve as submitted. <laughs> Okay, uh, let's give that a try. Um, let's see, uh, Val, I'll ask you, but I know what your answer is. Absolutely not. Okay, um, Abby. Uh, no, because we had some other things we wanted to do, so. Uh, okay, um, so she's a no. John. John. It's in La La Land. Yes, sir. He'll pass. John, no, please, please. <laughs> I'm trying to keep order here and doing a really piss poor job at it. John, the motion is to approve this as submitted. Are you in favor? Opposed? No, I'm in favor of it. Okay. Diane, are you in favor of your motion? I am in favor of it. And I am too. So the motion approves three in favor, two opposed. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Now let's jump from the from the fire into the frying pan because now we have the hardscape and the pool. Yeah. Um, should we I stop sharing or should I stop sharing or should I just bring the? No, no. This is good. I, I, okay. I, this is yeah. This it's it's nice to have you sort of controlling what we're we're seeing. Okay. Oh, so sure. the hardscape and pool we kind of sort of already looked at. Diane had um, concerns about the amount of drive, I believe, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Um, was there anything else? Uh, do, is that a... Can I, sorry, Anton? Yes, I'm just trying to find, locate the, the PDF. Sorry, yeah, because, there you go. There you go. That was the application for the house, not... Okay, yes. here we go. This is yeah. the application for the hardscape. Yes. So what we are, what the owner of the property is trying to do is fit uh, fit the twelve by twenty four feet mm -hmm. hole um, that is going to be tucked behind the buildings and surrounded by vegetation. Um, we are trying to relocate the existing driveway or parking um, from Surfside Drive and create a curb cut from Surfside Drive. Did, did you say you're trying to relocate? Yes. Well, okay. there is there is on a curb cut. Got it. To be to be, you know. You're closing that off, and you're putting it off of Surfside Road. Correct. Um, right. And we already checked with the zoning inspector, and um, this is um, you know acceptable acceptable way to do it. Um, the parking lot, you know, with the just approved second dwelling, will need three parking spaces um, okay. at, at a minimum, um, and really. The idea behind the parking lot, I can probably revisit the dimensions and um, minimize the, yeah. the shell. As well, much as so you already know, Anton, that that is going to be a concern of Diane. So doing something like that would get her more in favor. Yes, uh, definitely. Yeah. And we are uh, also proposing another um, a line of um, vegetation that's going, going to block uh, whatever has been seen from the road towards the property again for privacy. Um, there is, as you see on the photo, an existing privet. So um, the curb cut is going to go somewhere in this okay. location. Very good. All right. So you're all set. 
Um, Diane, do you have any other uh, comments specific to the land? No, uh, the only thing is, is he going to do any planting or just or just that evergreen hedge? So this there's an existing privet hedge along yes. sort of side road. Yeah. Uh, there's some vegetation, existing overgrown vegetation um, along Surside that is going to be, you know, impacted by the construction, and we are going to, you know, uh, sw sweep that side of the property with evergreens, and the other additional um, uh, vegetation that we're proposing is to block the back side of the property with this um, um, uh, private um, hedge mm -hmm. or, or, you know. Okay, well, first of all, I wanted to know if there was going to be like lawn, whereas you got the type. Oh, there, there is lawn, yeah. If you yes. look right and, there, yeah. This. And the other thing is, what if you got to go around the pool so you knock out the view? Uh, well, he's relying on the privet for that, I'm sure. <laughs> well, privet hitch, yeah. And probably it's better to be. It's probably a good idea to be an evergreen <laughs> instead of privet. Yeah, the other thing now is that I the, think... the your existing dwelling is blocking some of it. Mm -hmm. And the proposed dwelling is blocking some of it from Surfside Drive. So I I I wouldn't get rid of the existing privet. I would oh, add I to don't it. Think no, we're not. We're not. We're not. He's yeah. not. Yeah. Right, but you do, as Diane said, you you will need screening. Um, so. Um. Okay, let's make sure that Diane is finished with her comments. Diane, I've finished. I've finished. Okay, thanks, thanks, Diane. Abby. Yeah, I'm just. My concern is the. Um, well, my first concern is, is the row of evergreen hedge Leyland cypress <laughs> did you see the Leyland cypress that got blown over in the storm this I, is why we don't do Leyland I, cypress i prefer um, yes yeah um another kind of evergreen yes but um those trees grow like weeds and then they knock over in the wind yeah um but my concern would be uh, screening the pool uh, from the back, and when you say the back, do you mean uh, Surfside Drive it, side or Surfside Road side? Uh, Surfside, Surfside Road side. Surfside yeah. Road side. Okay. Yeah, that's got to be screened in a sort of a serious way. If that's Surfside Road, the one I, think I Anton, know. Yeah. What? What? Abby is saying is like there's sort of a window there uh, between um, your existing dwelling and your proposed dwelling that doesn't seem to have much going on. You may mm -hmm. want to beef up the vegetation. Def I can do that. I can. There's the covered porch. Yeah. And so between the covered porch and um, which this I think this is a window well of some sort, I can just block that one off mm -hmm. as well. And, I think and if I can propose approach. also. Sorry, go ahead. I think the better approach to that corner is to mm -hmm. is to stagger the the evergreens, it, it, whether they're cedars or whatever they are, to stagger them so they're not just a soldier course. Because I'm not sure that that is the um, lay of the land over there. Um, I understand the privet. Keep the keep keep all the existing privet, but. I would stagger the course of, um, yep, yeah, those things. Um, sure, yeah. Right. And what's, what's down here on the bottom? Existing wood scent fence. Okay, good. Um, right, okay. So, and you're going to minimize the driveway. And yes. what is the material? Shell. 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 Oh my God. Well, Bel uh, Belgian block is good for an apron. I'm not sure. If there are shells over there, um, I would prefer. Um, I'm not sure what I prefer. What is over there? What is the Surfside Road material? 
It looks like it looks like asphalt. Asphalt. Yeah. It's all I think, asphalt. I don't I would never like say that for a material, but I wonder if that isn't the way to go. I think shell is in, is is sort of inappropriate there. Um so hmm. I'd like to hear what other people say. Okay, well, we have two other people, I believe, Val being one of them, actually three, including me. Val? I agree with Abby about the Leland Cypress as mm. a person who lives in this area, and especially the beginning of my street, which is Newtown Road. We have rows of Leland Cypress that are like 40 feet mm. tall, so everywhere you go is like this weird... It, it's just weird. It's not natural. It's not Nantucket. It's not anything. And this is a major corner. Like this is a major cut through. It's a four way stop. No, I know we don't have say over that, but I'm saying Anton, no. Sure. <laughs> and no, I, just, I, just... I, I could care less about the pool. Um, I don't think you're going to see it. And um or the shell driveway. Most people have gravel. That's it. I, I'd certainly, if if we're getting away from the shell, I'd certainly prefer gravel over asphalt. No question. Um, so thank you, Val. John, your turn. What is the question? The question <laughs> is, what do you think of this landscape application? Oh, wait a minute. Yeah, I want to see something. Um, no, I get right here. I made a note too. Uh, nothing else in right here. Oh, the pool. Does, does, it, does the pool have a rollback? <laughs> Anton? Um, I'm not sure. Uh, cover, you mean? Yeah. I'll um just say yes yes there you go yes yes yes, yes. <laughs> what a mess what john what is it i said yes oh are you all set i'm all set fine oh okay sorry um motion to approve it um, John, I don't think that that motion is going to go because we're looking for some very minor revisions, but we would like to see some revisions. So rather than me go through the time of polling the board, could you just make change the motion to be hold for some revisions? No, we can we can pass this. Mr. Oh, well. Oh, yeah, I'll make okay. a motion right now. So, so but let, let, let's make sure that we, okay, John was making a motion to approve it as is, which I don't think is going to fly. John, we, could I, could I um, add to your motion um, to say pool cover, gravel driveway, stavert, staggered evergreens. Pushed in off the street bring it bring it off the the corner as much as you can keep the existing privet yes and, oh you were going to minimize anton you were going to minimize the driveway the driveway right? yes yeah, help the, by, job moving yes i vote in favor of it well that was that was actually your revised yeah. motion so yes. you're adopting um uh abby's additional comments Okay, that would be through staff. So on John's motion, Abby. Aye. Very good, Diane. Do we still have Diane? Yeah. We do? I see your hand. Is she muted? Yes. Oh, she is muted. Okay, so let's, Val, <laughs> how about you? I'm an I, except, yeah, with those qualifications. Yeah. Yep, yeah. that's right. John on the aye, on, aye, aye, aye. okay. Aye. There's Diane is an in and John on your motion. Aye. Thank you, and I'm in favor too. Hey Anton, how was that? That was fun. That was that was, that was boring. So good. Thank yeah. you very much. That was boring. <laughs> I was just joking because you said that it's very. 
Bad joke. Okay. Sorry. Um, one yeah, thing I just want to say. I just want to say one thing. Um, I'm going to talk with the owner of the property to about this Leland Cypress because I, I feel the same way with you. Uh, like oh, you. Leland uh, Cypress, listen. It, it, yeah. there, it's going to tell the guy it's going to yeah. cost him a fortune, a Later. fortune yeah. just to trim it. It takes so much effort to trim effort. those things. Yeah. It's just not worth it. Just, 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 yeah. No, wait, mine. Give five, two minutes. <laughs> okay, so let's move five on. Minutes. Let's get one more out of the Thank way. Thank you very much. Okay, so Ethan McMorrow, our friend. Yes. Ethan, which one are you here for? I'm here for the three Tatimo. Tatimo. It's a garage. We made some, we submitted this uh, around New Year's, made some well, changes per the board what? request. I don't even see it on the list. Well, what it's do you right, mean? It's number I'm right 11. There. It's right there. Yeah, number 11. Oh, okay. Okay, <laughs> Abigail. Yes. Quick, there's a motion. You're sharing. Oh, okay, let's go, let's go. <laughs> what right. you so, got, Ethan? This is basically a, we have a, uh, there's a garage on the property. It's down at the bottom. It's being moved off across the street to the neighbors. We're building a new two-car garage with this, addition on the side and a little, it's a second dwelling. On the top is the previous submission. Below are the changes per the request of the HCC board. We're just add some dormers, um, extend the covered porch protruding up beyond so it's not so small and add um, a little roof above the door. And, oh, and tighten the chimney. Question from yes. Mr. McMahon. Yes. I'm looking at the Proposed, oh, all right. You hold it there, bottom of the left. What is that? What what elevation is that? Not elevation. What? Northeast, south, or west? The bottom one. The bottom one is east. Faces the back of the property. Oh, backyard. All right. all right. Is that a carport underneath that roof? No, it's a covered patio. Huh? Covered patio. Covered patio. Thank you. <laughs> Have a good holiday. Thank you. If anybody went and saw where this is or looked at it, <clears throat> motion to adjourn. No, we you haven't the... even voted yet. <laughs> if you scroll up, you can see the photographs. Can you, can you can't we go back see to... it? So that's what's working in your favor. And no, yeah, God damn it. Yeah. Okay. So, Val, anything else? That's it. I did all your changes you asked for. No. You have a motion on the floor. No, 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 no. John, everybody didn't get to speak. Okay. Um, so this is what happens when I am chair. There's oh, just Abby, <laughs> Abby, <laughs> Abby. If you were paying attention to the last three hours, oh, it happens when I'm the chair too. Wait, I try to do Robert's rules. Okay, here we go. So Ethan. Thank you for presenting. So then Val said, what did you say? God damn it. Um, <laughs> what is anything else you want to add? No, nope. I think it's fine. You can't see it. Okay. So Diane. I, you can't see it. I'm for it. <laughs> okay. And John, I know you're for it. Hi. Is there anybody else on this board? You. Um, you okay, and I'm fine too. So do I hear a motion? Motion, motion to approve. Oh my god, okay. On everybody's motion, Val, aye, Diane, aye, John, aye, and Abby. That I'm an eye. Let's call Thank that you. John. Let's call that John's vote. Thank you, Ethan. Aye. Oh, goodness. Okay, wow. Whew. Um, all right, folks, it's it's time to go it. drink. Um, yeah. I shouldn't be saying that, but that's actually what I'm going to be doing. It's the truth. I beat you to it. So, so um, listen, another tough night, uh, but thank you all for sticking it out. And uh, actually, I was going to say I'll see you on Thursday, but it turns out that I am going up to Vermont. So I'm going to miss Thursday's meeting. Um, so, but I'll see you on Tuesday. <laughs> Mr. Chair, I repeat that. I couldn't hear it. Uh, what about a minute here, God? Hang on one second, John, and I will repeat it. Uh, so, Holly, what were you about to say, dear? Uh, approved minutes. 
<sighs> of course. Hey, Thank before you. we break, guys, can we approve the minutes of January 18th and 20th? Move to approve. All right. Thanks, uh, Diane, on that motion. Let's see. Val? Is Val gone? Aye. Oh, there's Abby. Val. Um, Abby? Aye. Thank you, John. What is your motion to adjourn? Your motion is oh, to approve the minutes of January 18th and 20th. Uh, yes, aye. All right, thank you. And Diane, on your motion? Aye. And I'm in favor too. That motion carries unanimously. Okay, I think this is it. We've had a long night. Um, hope you all have a good night. And um, thanks for- Be careful and don't hit any trees while you're up in Vermont skiing. <laughs> yeah, don't, don't, uh, don't ski into a tree. That would be so- Yeah, no, I won't do that. I tomorrow is that. my tomorrow is my mother's birthday. Oh. We well, tell her I said happy birthday. Most, <laughs> most of us are dead in the family. Yeah. Um, say a prayer for her for me. Um, okay, folks, do we want to Watch adjourn? To adjourn. Yeah, there we go. Okay, thank you all again. Um, do, we, do you have to take a roll call? I, I do. Yeah. So I'm gonna I'm gonna. Abby has made a motion to adjourn. Um, thank you all for. Sticking it out um, on Abby's motion, Val. Val's hope you gone. feel better, Val. Maybe she's gone. Yes, yeah, she's probably gone. Okay, so how about you, Diane? You in favor of Abby's motion? I say motion? I, 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 I. All right, very good. Thank you, John. I got a lot of tools. I'll, I'll come get them. I got a whole collection. Oh, Are you in favor of the motion to adjourn? Yes, I did. We already wrote it on it. Well, we didn't, but you just you just did so, and now I'm going to uh, ask uh, Diane if she's in favor of her motion. Yes. All right, and I'm in favor of your motion too, my dear. Yep. So, yep. everyone, have a good night. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good night. Good night, Esmeralda. Good night, Holly. Good night, Terry. Good night. Good night. Thank, you, Thank you, staff. You gotta have a lot of money, Gary. Uh. <laughs> Leave. <laughs>